Er, some that cover the NFL nationally believe that it's not a stretch to believe that there may not be a defensive player taken in the top 10 somewhere in that neighborhood, which in essence would appear that you would get a slide of the position of edge rusher, a slide of the position of cornerback. And really nobody was talking about corner until Jim Mercy, the Colts owner, came on with us last Wednesday and brought it up. And I brought up corner and, and said, hey, we've got two, we need three. Which uh, has had a lot of people point the finger to rock us in and say, well, he's not. Now, he's not somebody they're looking at right now as far as that's concerned. But, yeah, there is a lot to get to. And, really, I think what we lose sight of right now is, I mean, this team, I'm not going to say desperate. They act like they're not playing the desperation role. They brought guys in here to, quote, unquote, uh, quote you know, compete. What, Tavy Davenport? But, I mean, let's face it. I mean, you are you are going to have to have your future left tackle in this draft, no matter how much you want to compete. And you say you don't panic, don't panic. I saw Peter King write this morning in his one and only mock. He believes that the Colts are going to trade back. I think in all likelihood, that's what most out there probably believe right now. Trading back, trying to get yourself another pick further down the road while still getting that player that you want. But do you do that if an edge rusher falls right in your lap? You know, what do you think about that edge rushing category? What do you think about the cornerback? I mean, is that legit? Anybody at all believe that to be legit? Uh, we were talking about this last night with Chris Hagan. I was on Fox 59 with in the award-winning or soon-to-be award-winning show that we do. Uh, but I do it from my living room, which makes my uh, head and face look enormous, which is good. I don't care. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Somebody said last night, man, would you not want to go in studio? Your head looks enormous. And I'm saying, when I go in studio, my then my ass looks enormous. So, I mean, uh, they give or take, I'll just take the face looking enormous. And then I can, like, do it from home. And I don't have to have pants on or anything, which is all good. But there is a lot to digest, and this is the perfect day. I mean, a perfect afternoon to fire up Rick Venturi. And, of course, Rick Venturi is going to be a part of the coverage coming up on Thursday. I think it is uh, Matt Taylor, voice of the Colts. It is Joe Wrights, the former offensive lineman, Rick Venturi, and Jeff Diamond, who we've had on this show before. He's a former NFL general manager. Uh, they are going to uh, break everything down, and they're going to roll right up to number 21 overall coming up on Thursday. So a lot of ground to cover with Rick, and we shall do that coming up at 4 o'clock today. So if you guys want to lob in any questions that you have, any interest you might have, whatever, uh, today certainly is the day to do that. We'll go over that free agency, how this team looks, uh, how much better are they if he believes they are any better right now. You know, the words of Jim Irsay last week to us. How much better the rest of the division is going to get. I mean, really, there's a lot of ground to cover because we have not been over much of this at all with Rick, and we'll do so coming up here at 4 o'clock. All right, uh, we'll discuss that. Pacers win again last night. I said this, too, and I said this last week, and I stretched it into TV last night. Um, I, I, there's, I, I know that, listen, you look at who the Pacers have played, and you're no doubt right. They are not playing the cream of the crop of the NBA right now. But they are winning games. And I do like that you see guys – like, I'll give you a great example last night. You know, one thing I really like seeing, because I like him a great deal, it was nice to see Justin Holiday break out of what has been a long and significant slump. It was good to see him last night get that walk-off on Bally Sports Indiana with J.J. 
because it has been a struggle for him. That was really nice to see. And it's also, to me, really nice to see Brissett play. I mean, I like it when guys get an opportunity. I mean, who knows how this is going to look? It is different. Much different when you're playing teams as they have been playing and beating. When you're beating Orlando, when you're beating Detroit, it is different. But you can also embrace that. Now, I'm assuming the crowd out there that just would like to see them lose games may not be embracing that. And that's okay. But for those of us that want to watch them play, you know, and play hard, and they are at least doing that. And they're winning games against teams that you can make an argument they should be beating anyway. Like, if you're going to talk about a team right now, and this is going to break the heart of a lot of Pacer fans out there, but if you're going to talk about a team in the East, talk about the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, on the front page of ESPN.com, the question is, where did these Atlanta Hawks come from? Well, they have been cobbled together here recently when Pacers former coach Nate McMillan has taken over. You know, oftentimes in the NBA, because that is the way that it is built, the players are always going to get the props, always going to get the pat on the back. And in return, most of the time, the coaches are going to get all the blame. But he has been outstanding for whatever reason, whatever they've done with this team. And they win last night against Milwaukee. I don't even, and, and Trey Young didn't play. I mean, they're getting it done, and to me, an incredible story. And this is something as we get into the offseason, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about and be able to assess even more Nate Bjorkgren and what this first year has brought. Uh, to me, if it's brought anything, and I said this on 59 last night, it has, I think, drawn us to the conclusion that the personnel on this team does not match the way that he wants to play, does not match the style in which he wants to play. And everybody always jumps to the conclusion of, well, that has to mean, you know, the two bigs. And, and no, not necessarily the two bigs. I mean, you can talk about the two bigs all you want, one offense, one defense, that's great. But, I mean, it's also about those that are going to be playing in the backcourt. I'll give you a great example. So on Friday's show, right, does anybody remember that? Alex Golden, who is uh, setting the pace, a podcast, who's uh, been on the show a couple of different times, and I was on his podcast uh, a couple of days ago, actually a week ago. And I guess Kevin Pritchard did an interview with somebody that covers the NBA from Sports Illustrated, which I think goes to show you how much I know about those that are with Sports Illustrated right now. I don't know who it is, but it's somebody that covers the NBA from Sports Illustrated. And I guess the reference here, and without hearing it, and just kind of interpreting how he answered the question or, or his, his statement with this Pacer team right now, would lead you to believe when he says something like, we haven't seen this group together. What does that mean to you? And again, I don't, we could be, and this is what is difficult by reading, you know, quotes, you know, something that's taken from a conversation where you read it via social media, because it can be completely taken out of context. In this case, I don't know if it is or not, but I would say this, that would lead you to believe that he feels maybe this thing needs to be run back because we haven't seen these guys together. And that's something we have talked about for a while because that is true. We haven't seen these guys together. However, even without T.J. Warren right now, how much better? If he's a part of this team right now and these guys are healthy, and that's also going to be a big key because these dudes have never been healthy. It's like one foot injury after another. Somebody's always got something wrong with their feet. But have we not seen it? And then in relation to what the first-year head coach wants to do, have we not seen enough to know that a lot of these pieces – longer term are not going to fit into the way of transforming this team 
into a top four, into a legitimate Eastern Conference contender. I just kind of feel like we have seen enough there. But that type of statement about, you know, not seeing this group together, while completely accurate, and I will say this, I mean, it does bring me some interest, but it just seems like we have seen it. It seems like we have been down that path enough to know exactly what what we're dealing with. You know, what have you found out about year number one with Nate Bjorgren? I mean, even with the injuries, how about prior to the injuries? If this team were relatively healthy but still without T.J. Warren, would Nate McMillan have done a better job or would this team maybe checked out on him long ago because it was the team that wanted the change, the players wanted the change? So we can go over that, but I, I don't want that to take away because I, I'm glad – I'm glad these guys are actually playing, and it's good to see some of these guys play well. Uh, Brissett being one, especially one that hasn't had much of an opportunity and now, by circumstances, due to injury, has been given an opportunity. And to me, it's fun to see them play well. I don't know how beneficial or lack thereof it's going to be for this team down the road. But I do like watching them play well. I, and I, I Listen, and I, if I'm going to tune into a game, we all, I think, on the same page with this, aren't we? If we're going to tune into a game, I mean, you don't want to see any half-assery. I don't want to see any half-assery. At least that's how I am. And I don't know if that is going to go to the positive or the negative category as, you know, how beneficial this might be to the team moving forward. But, I mean, you got, like last night, for example, you got a Sunday night, this thing, what, pops on at 8 o'clock? What time did that start last night? 8? I know Kyle was in here until like 12.30. Yeah, I'm not going to tune in on Sunday night. Well, I'm sure as hell not watching the Oscars. I just, I've never seen a film. I had no idea what any of them were. <laughs> I didn't even know the movie theaters were open this past year. They all come off of uh, Netflix and beats me. I think, did Mike Conley Jr. win an Oscar last night? I want to win an Oscar too. Holy hell. I have a great film that I produced back in 1988 called Flowers from Mac with a group of my friends at Eastern. Uh, very, uh, what do they say? Avant, well, I don't know. I don't even know what avant-garde means. And they normally kind of put that, that always equates to, to me, at least in my head, uh, in my, I guess, redneckish thinking, that avant-garde always equates to weird. Well, this is a weird film. But I think Mike Conley Jr., I think he won an Oscar, didn't he? Some sort of, he was involved in something on an Oscar? Anyway, I'm sorry, I got off that. If I'm going to watch a Pacer game, I don't care. On a Sunday night, any night. If I'm going to watch it, I do want to see effort. I don't want to see half-assery. And that always kind of answers the question for me, and everybody always brings up Tank. And, hey, it's so easy to go out there and just – I mean, they're, they're close enough against a good team, a mediocre team, uh, to take a beating anyway. I, I think the last thing you want to see is for this group to take a beating against some of these crap water teams they played recently, especially in the last three. So that's where I come off on it. Yeah, I didn't even know movie theaters were open. And, man, the Oscars. <laughs> man, no idea. None. That's on me, I guess, though. All right, we can discuss that if you like. A Pacer stuff, NBA stuff, NFL draft. At 239-1070, email address, jmv at 1070thefan.com. I'm going to jump inside the lounge on YouTube Live with you guys coming up in a minute. Hopefully you guys understand what I was talking about last week. You remember when I brought this up? Because somebody called up, and this may have been anything goes, and said, hey, why are you not, you know, no, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. Why are you talking about the Reds? It's early in the season. Why do you bring them up? It's still April. It doesn't matter. And again, while those that tell me that or told me that last week are accurate, you absolutely now see the reason why. 
I think this was after um, yeah, Garrett came in and they yeah, blew that three zip lead, and then they lost, and then the next day they lost fourteen to eleven. I mean, they're inventing new ways to lose, but unfortunately for us Reds fans, they're ways I think that a lot of us are very familiar with over the years. So now you understand is because the Reds, once upon a time, they were riding a six-game win streak. And it was awesome. It was glorious. I don't care what time of year that it was. It was glorious to watch, happy to watch. I enjoyed it. They were either leading or at the top of the NL Central. It was April, and I don't care to tell everybody about it. You want to know why? Because as they say, that worm shall turn, and it has. The Reds have gone from the penthouse to the blank house in a matter of a week and a half. It's been incredible, but very Reds-like. The beginning of the season, first week and a half, they reeled off six straight wins. Six consecutive Reds wins is the baseball equivalent of, for me, a sports arousal. It's awesome. That makes, you know, April, May, June, July, whenever, doesn't matter. Wrapped around the All-Star break, just give it to me, baby. Uh, since that point in time, well, at least in the last seven, they are 0-7. They have lost seven straight, again, all the way down to the cellar. Four games out of first as the Brewers set the pace. And really, they have been as brutal to watch here recently as they were fun to watch early on. And I say early on because we're still early on. I'm saying early on this month. That is why I embrace it. Because I sit around like every other. I just say Reds fans, but this is anybody that's a fan in the Queen City of any sport. You sit around and you wait for crap to happen. You know, the term I bring up all the time about a fan base being schlep rock, where you're walking around that Flintstones character, you know, with the rain cloud over the top of your head and everything always sucks and, oh, woe was me. Um, that is... That Schlep Rock tag for Cincinnati fans, and not just Reds fans, that Schlep Rock tag, it is there for a reason. Because it is true, it is accurate, and it has hell, it's been there since 1990. Even when things were good, even when in the postseason they had a 2-0 lead and a best of five going back home. All they needed was one win against the Giants. He couldn't do that. Going back when Jay Bruce lost a ball in the lights against the Phillies in the postseason. One game playoff. What was that, 99? The one game, the Al Lighter game? See, it makes me nauseous. I hate the fact that I remember most of this. I mean, there's really been nothing to embrace since wire to wire, 1990. So, yes, I take... I take a bit of a month as a bit of a season to embrace it. If they do something nice in June, even though they may be out of it or what, I'm still going to embrace it because it's the little wins when you've been a fan of the Reds. And I don't know what we're all paying for with this. I don't. I don't know if it's wire to wire. Um, I don't know if it was Pete Rose. I don't know if it it was, uh, what's his name, Allen, taking down the team, the big red machine taking that thing apart like somebody would a 75 Chevy Nova. It's been incredible. It has. So, yeah, that's why I embrace it. That's why I embrace it because it's just a matter of time before things are likely to go haywire. Seven consecutive losses for my fellas. And, oh, by the way, too, They've lost seven straight. You know where they play later on tonight? How's this going to go for them? Uh, Chavez Ravine, everybody. So they get a little early week set with the Dodgers. (laughs) Woo! All right. That makes us all excited. I'm excited. It's coming up later on tonight. I will say this. I was doing the takeover next door on Saturday, and it was during just – and I'm not talking about the dude that had his leg break in half. 
Yeah, we were talking about that last night in the Pacer game, too. With, uh, what's his name, Devin Kennedy? Is that his name? Kennedy, Kennedy. He's from uh, Mishawaka Marion in Princeton University. Um, just had a gruesome, and I don't like watching these. Like, somebody sent out the guy, the UFC guy, Wiedemann, on Saturday, and I don't even want to see it. When that thing, like, you know, if you guys are watching me on YouTube Live, when the middle of your leg starts doing a little bit of this, I'm going to check out. I don't need to see it. I think, I mean, one's really enough, and yeah, I'm just not, I'm not into it. But, man, I tell you what, when you had the Dodgers and the Padres and you had Tatis Jr. and Bauer, that's some stuff right there. You know what makes it even better? These guys are going back and forth. That is some good usage of social media, by the way, too, between Tatis and Bauer. Now, we talk about often what bad uses of social media, how you can get in trouble. There's a solid form of social media that I'm down with. Man, it is good to have a little bit of confrontation. And Bauer did say this. I don't know if he altogether believes it or not because you know he's going to go TNT at some point, right? You know, he says, well, you know, you should be able to celebrate hitting a ball in Major League Baseball is difficult, and he understood why he was celebrating. Yeah, that might have been the moment for him, but you know with Trevor Bauer, that's likely not going to last. If somebody else does it or or if Tatis does it again and he's not in a jovial mood whatsoever, then that will probably change. At least that point of view will. But that was a nice little back and forth over the weekend. I was pleasantly surprised, full disclosure, across the board on it all. I mean, that's when when you're looking for something to have fun with. That was it. Hey, Bobby Mack writes this. Jim said they have two cornerbacks and they need three, but they need four edge rushers and they have zero. <laughs> no one. hey who not listen who knows i mean a little sandbag in game they've needed an edge rusher since robert mathis and they've been they've been trying a thousand different ways to get it too yeah doug thrasher says the oscars is that for youtube i have no idea i didn't even know that movie theaters had been open all year that was surprising to me. It was it was on, I guess. I don't know who hosted it. I don't know anything about it other than it was on last night. And believe me, it's not something that I'm I'm not boycotting anything or anything like that. I tell you what, Casey, I'll get back to you on the other side. Yeah, Aaron Holiday grabbing some bench last night. And did you see who took his minutes? Keelan Martin took his minutes last night. I think Holiday got two. I mean, listen. For Kevin Pritchard, you better hope that Brissett does turn into something. You better hope that some of these dudes turn into something because guys that you actually drafted aren't. That will become problematic. All right, let me take a break and we shall return. Kyle, you got something right there? Are you going to add? You rocking the mask in here? Have you been doing that lately? Oh, we are? Has that been... Well, I'm uh I'm vaccinated as hell right here. Oh, why well, aren't you vaccinated? Half vaccinated? Well, I've got enough vaccination for the both of us in here. I'm fully vaccinated, and then I'm already a manimal. <laughs> I mean, listen, I went out. I mean, good or bad or whatever. Listen, my world didn't stop, and I'm glad I kept going. I mean, I kept going. I was doing remotes, and I'm going out. I'm going to casinos and bars. It was all good. And I got tested. Now, I'm not only, I got the combination. I got the double-barrel vaccination, and then I'm already a stinking manimal the way that it is at 51. I mean, hey, just, hey. Wait a minute, virus? Just, hey. I'll just do this to the virus. when he, <laughs> To get away. I'm all good. Let me take a break. I want to do your calls on the other side, and you guys better get in because we've got Rick Venturi coming up at the top of the hour. All you need to know about this Colts offseason and certainly all you need to know about this draft coming up on Thursday. They got you covered downstairs. That's on WIBC because the Pacers and Brooklyn will be going on up here, but it's Matt 
It is Joe Wrights. It is Rick Venturi. It is Jeff Diamond. And they got you covered for round number one. Is Gorman not a part of that? You couldn't find like five minutes, anything for Gorman to do whatsoever. Nothing? Rick Venturi joins us, back by popular demand, coming up at the top of the hour. 93.5107.5 and 1070 to fan. Android users, Bet River Sportsbook is ready for download in the Google Play Store. Just search for Bet Rivers and download the app. It's never been easier to get in the game. You'll enjoy the ease of use and critical speed of the new Bet Rivers Android app. Bet with a winner. Download the Bet Rivers Android app in the Google Play Store today. Must be 21 or over to play. Playable only in Indiana. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 9 with it. Hey, it's JMV. Life as we know it has changed due to COVID-19. There is a silver lining for homeowners. The real estate market is on fire, and now is the time to squeeze every last dollar out of your hard-earned equity you have accumulated in your home. And Mark Deedle is the dude, the only real estate agent that I trust and recommend to sell your home and to sell mine as well. His proprietary marketing system guarantees multiple offers in three days at full market value. His home selling program is designed to create a bidding war and maximize your sales price. That is awesome. Just ask Kevin and Gwen in Bargersville excited about moving to their new home. Mark Deedle did it. Mark Deedle's advanced marketing system creates a buying frenzy, allowing him to attract high price possible homeowners. Call Mark Deedle and his team, 317-755-4232. That's 317-755-4232. Online, markdeedle.com. That's markdietel.com. Tell him JMV sent you. You have the opportunity to build a future. AT&T is hiring technicians across the greater Indianapolis area to help expand and support the AT&T fiber network. Our technician teams are on the front lines of growing the AT&T fiber footprint and assisting customers with installing and supporting AT&T fiber. You'll experience new challenges and adventures, plus a $5,000 sign-on bonus. Apply today at att.jobs forward slash technician. That's att.jobs forward slash technician. AT&T is an equal opportunity employer. And now, a telemedicine appointment without AT&T Business Fiber. Oh, no, do I, oh, oh, hey, Doc, so um, what's the prognosis? Well, based on your chart, it looks like you, you have a permanent shipment. Wait, wait, what was that? Oh, sorry, I was just saying. Doc, Doc, uh, you're glitching. Uh, Must be yeah, slow upload uh, speeds. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I just wish I'd known the difference between upload and download speeds before I got my business internet. Anyway, I'm sorry, what were we talking about? My leg. Oh, right. It's fine, except for a small... Wait, except for what? Terrible. Is your small business suffering from slow upload speeds? Upgrade your business to AT&T Business Fiber for superior reliability and speed at our lowest price ever. There's no annual term commitment and no bundle required. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash business fast or call 844-661-FAST now. Nobody cares for you like family. Family Heating and Air. This is Malia with Family Heating and Air. and just wanted to say our techs are the best trained in the business. We've got our own trading facility in our office that we built out. The furnaces, ACs, heat pumps, air handlers out there. And we've also got virtual reality training set up for them so they can do that weekly. Constantly working on making sure we give you the best service with our best techs. 317-577-8077. Family Heating and Air Conditioning is your trusted local independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning dealer. This ad for Hellsberg Diamonds has been specifically written for those who'd rather think about baseball then engagement rings. It's the ninth inning and your pitcher's getting tired, so you look to the bullpen for a reliever. Now, if your bullpen was anything like Hellsberg Diamonds, you'd have an amazing selection to choose from, from all-star natural diamonds to the new hotshot lab-grown diamonds. Whichever one you choose, you can be sure that your engagement ring will bring home a win. Visit your local Hellsberg store and ask about our price match guarantee or check us out at hellsberg.com. PropSwap is America's exclusive number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Kevin Bowen here. PropSwap is a huge advantage that I use to find the best odds in the country. Download the free PropSwap app today. Sports with Dan Dockage. Kevin Harlan. I admire you so much and how you do your games and your preparation. You call it like you see it. We don't have enough of that. I have told you before, I'd love to do a game oh, with I you sometime it. down the road. Why don't, for the tournament, we get some people that do college basketball like all season long, like Dockage and Gillis and people like that. We should have you on. We should. 
Like college basketball is like one big community anyway, and we should all treat it like that. Stan Dockett weekdays noon to three on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. The Ride with JMV. I am in the parking lot right now hammering a bacon, egg, and chi, hold the chi in preparation to go deep with four hits and put on a laser show to the likes of which you have never witnessed in your entire life. 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. And inside the lounge on YouTube Live. What the hell are we talking about in here? Somebody called me a super spreader. I said I was a super spreader of studliness. I was careful, and now I am vaccinated, baby. <laughs> I have been for a month and a month and uh, a week or so. I'm feeling good. I'm playing a little hoop, ready to get back out. You know, we'll think about what the hell happens here in the month of May coming up here. I know I'm out on Thursday down at the dugout, which is always good. Got your chance at some Pacer tickets on Thursday with Coors Light, or as they say where I'm from, Coors. Coors, right? Curves light. That's coming up on Thursday at the dugout. And then this summer, we got once again the Backyard Bourbon broadcast coming at you, which is fantastic. Yeah, I got everybody talking about the Reds. I didn't mean to bum everybody out. I just – what I was trying to say, the point I was I was wanting to get across to you was I embrace the little things with that. I'm not completely transformed into the schlep rock fan that inhabits the Queen City, but I can understand why they all are. I mean, look at it. It's a mess. Not just the Reds, but the Bengals. I mean, I hope – Hope springs eternal with Joe Burrow as the quarterback. But, I mean, you got to shake loose of that that one sure thing quality that has dogged them since the late 80s. And that's being the Bengals. Being in Cincinnati. For whatever reason. <laughs> JMV. I knew it was too good to be true. I had one quick second thought, just hoping the Reds would not disappoint this right. What's that next stop? Embarrassing along the Reds train? Yeah. I had to embrace, I had to hurry up and talk some junk. Like, I didn't have too much, I wanted more time to talk junk. I had literally five minutes to talk junk, and now the Cardinals and the Cubs are right. I mean, I can't even talk junk anymore. Hey, JMV at 1070thefan.com via email here from Casey in Ellettsville with Aaron Holiday logging just two minutes in a game in which the Pacers were shorthanded and held a big fourth quarter lead. I think that tells us all we need to know about his future with the Pacers. Another disappointing first round pick. We sound like a broken record with this, but Kevin Pritchard is going to need to start hitting on these picks at some point. Casey in Ellettsville, you're absolutely right. Uh, he better hope that that Brissett and Goga, yeah, Brissett being one that you fall into, maybe he can turn into a a helper, a producer. I mean, listen, the jury's still out. I'm not going to say anything. You certainly know more, do you not, and understand more about Goga. You know, not being a a first round pick that. That doesn't work out, but that's that's the way that it looks right now. That's problematic. You know, that's another way that you can help yourself dig out of a hole with an organization where it's tough. I mean, I, we've said this before. It is tough. It is tough to get where you're going with the Pacers. I mean, it really is. But, I mean, if you're going to make it and you're continuously, you know, going to be around – you know, good to decent to better than decent. I mean, you're going to have to hit on some of these teams. You just do. But, yeah, I noticed it last night, too. Actually, I think Quinn on the broadcast alluded to it. Because Keelan Martin was getting, getting clocked last night, and Aaron Holiday wasn't. It is pretty incredible. Uh, Reggie Sykes says, hey, go Dodgers, go. You might be completely right about that. I 
That's going to be a tough one. I don't know if I can justify staying up until 1.30 in the morning watching that. That is going to be highly difficult for me. Uh, we shall see. Hey, JMV, I was watching you and Hagen last night going over the draft. You always do that from your living room. Yeah, since the pandemic, and really that's one of the things that came out of this pandemic that I dig is that we can do this from my house and I don't have to drive all the way up to the northwest side and then tape like five minutes and then come back home. That's good. And I like doing, I like being on with Hagen, and I like dominating the Sunday night ratings landscape too. That's pretty awesome. What's up, Cam? I like doing all that and more, <laughs> which is good. Steven San Antonio, Texas writes this. Hmm. If only there was a team out there looking for an explosive playmaking wide receiver with cap space. Uh, this is from Pro Football Talk. It's about Julio Jones. Hey, listen. Julio Jones, a little helper for this team, yes. Do I believe that's going to happen? Absolutely not. It's just like last week when I mentioned Charlie Casserly, who has been really good in the past when he used to work in the NFL, suggesting that the Colts are going to draft a 21, a wide receiver. I would be absolutely shocked, then floored. And if fans around here say T.Y. Hilton is hurt too much, I mean, Julio Jones has something nagging him every year. I am, I, I feel confident about saying no way, no how. And, and again, that's not coming from me suggesting that they should be done at that position, suggesting that they don't need more. Because to me, they do. I mean, there, there are some things, one being Paris Campbell, for example, right? So you got Paris Campbell, but the only thing you have not seen from him is the availability. It is still a myth to this point. I swear to you, I said nearly the same damn thing about Deion Kane. Remember the uh, greatness or what might be, what could be, what's going to be from Deion Kane? Remember that myth? It's a little bit different with Campbell because we've actually seen something quickly on the field, but if you can't stay healthy, if you can't stay available, then you're not going to benefit anybody. And that's been the issue. Yeah, Desmond Patman's another guy. I'm not going to su suggest that Patman is in the category of Deion Kane, but he is still a, well, I mean, look at the size, and everybody says, yeah, he's working out with – with uh, Michael Pittman Jr., and he could be this and he could be that. I mean, this team, to me, is in a situation where it is time to win and time to win in the postseason. It's time to win a division. They're in that situation where you got to do more than cross your fingers and hope that Desmond Patman's going to transition into something that a lot of the fans believe him maybe could be in this case, or he maybe could be in this case. And, yeah, same holds true, I think, for just kind of waiting around until Paris Campbell's healthy. It's tough. Yeah, Pants Off Sports. Thank you, Litzy. Great draft talk last night on Pants Off Sports. Now we're ready to hear Coach Venturi's inside it for me, too. Pants Off Sports is pretty good. Hey, JMV, I just barely caught the end of it. Did you say you are going to be at the dugout on Thursday? Yes, with Coors Light. At the dugout coming up on Thursday. And I think I'm going to have tickets to the Pacers-Nets game to give away while I'm there. And I believe Thursday, is it stormy? What's it going to be on Thursday? See, I haven't been outside at the dugout yet, and I really want to be outside. But today's great. I think tomorrow's going to be great. Then we're going to get some storms. And uh, What's Thursday look like? Yeah, Wednesday gonna be and Thursday, there's going to be some rain. Well, Thursday, crap. Want any rain? But, yeah, we'll have stuff to give away with you coming up on Thursday. Hey, listen, it's not lost on me about the wide receiver position. I mean, think about who you're conversing with here. I mean, I'm the one that told Carson Wentz that if I were in charge of the team, there would be 35 wide receivers on it. So you got to keep in mind 
who you're listening to talking to right now. I am Mr. Wide Receiver. I just don't think anything like that is even in the neighborhood of happening. That's all I'm saying. And I don't believe that it's going to be 21 overall. I mean, Bobby mentioned a little bit earlier, I mean, you've been struggling to find an edge rusher of any kind since Robert Mathis. And if if there's a run on offensive players in the top 10 and then D guys slide, you know, including cornerbacks, you're going to be able to, to hold out. You got to go get one right there. You take a chance on a guy like Phillips with his medical history. Um, you know, Rousseau, who opted out a year ago. Or do you just go, I said this on Friday too, if I come on the show on Friday at 3 and the Colts have yet to draft their left tackle of the future, how are you feeling about that? How are you going to be feeling? Are you going to, hey, it's okay because Chris Ballard is shifty and he's moving up and down. Hey, we're doing this and we're going to met dip, dip, dip. You're going to be feeling confident about it, or you're going to be saying, hey, well, wait a minute. I know that you brought in these dudes for competition, but we're thinking about maybe somebody long-term here. I am going to guess the latter. I'm going to guess you're going to be going, hey, what about this? Most of you believe, logically, they trade back and then at the end of round number one at some point end up getting a uh, left tackle. But we shall see. I would have to think that dangling carrot of edge rusher. If these defensive guys, as the gurus say, do slide a little bit. I All it comes down to is where these dudes are on their big board. And then whatever the board says, if the board says, hey, man, can you get an edge rusher? Because, uh, look, the board talking to them. Can you guys get an edge rusher here? Hey, wait a minute. If you guys get an edge rusher right here, then at 54, even though Peter King says you can't get out of the 30s and still get a quality longer-term left tackle, at 54, we think you still can. That's like the board talking to him right there. We still think you can. So why don't you just hold out, even though the fans are going crazy on this clown's afternoon talk show here. I think you can hold out. A quick one will return. You, me, and your calls, conversations about anything you want to hit. Rick Venturi, top of the hour. Must listen coming up at 4 on 93.5, 107.5, and 1070. The fam. The savings are in full bloom on every new and pre-owned vehicle at Hubler. Spring into something new at all Hubler locations. Visit drivehubler.com. Kids, tell your parents about Forum Credit Union's Sprout of the Month contest, where you could win $100 in a Sprout account. Details at 1075thefan.com. Whether you are a high handicapper or regularly break bar, having properly fit golf clubs is vital. For a premium custom fitting that will lower your scores, see the experts at Golf Performance Academy located at Golf Club of Indiana. They offer many top brands including Titleist, TaylorMade, Callaway, Ping, Cobra, and Mizuno. And they are the home for Titleist Thursdays and the new hub for PXG fittings in the Indy area. For more information, go to GolfIndiana.com or call 317-769-6388. JV here. Hey, football fans, the 2021 draft is right around the corner, and FanDuel Sportsbook is hooking new users up with 20 to 1 odds on Trevor Lawrence to be drafted number one. Yeah, crazy, right? That means a $5 bet wins you $100 when you bet on the projected number one pick. The biggest lock of the draft. Put an extra $100 in your pocket just for betting on it. That is awesome. It's FanDuel Sportsbook, and the promo code is JMV. Take full advantage of this exclusive offer. That's FanDuel Sportsbook with the promo code JMV. 
and do it now. Must be 21 plus and present in Indiana. New users only must wager and designate it off for market. $10 first deposit required. Max bet $5. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Introducing Body Armor Edge. Sports hydration with the boost of caffeine. With 100 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of electrolytes, Body Armor Edge is boosted hydration for today's athletes. It's more than a sports drink. It's Body Armor Edge. Get your Body Armor Edge today at your local Circle K, priced at 2 for $4 every day. And right now you have the chance to win $10,000 towards your dream gym with your Body Armor Edge purchase. See in store for details. The Pacers return home to take on the Portland Trail Blazers tomorrow evening at 6.30 on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. The Ride with JMV. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! (laughs) 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, Rick Venturi, top of the hour. Uh, T. Shaw says, I'm still waiting for Derek Rogers to become a superstar. <laughs> Swafford says, this JMV, sell your soul to help your team. The time is now. Bradenton, Florida, shout out from Swafford. That's nice. Yeah, that's probably it. That's what we're waiting on right here. Is, is for that to happen. Uh, my man Corey Kenny writes this. Could the Colts be one of the teams asking about Julio Jones? I would absolutely positively be shocked. I mean, beyond shocked. So I would say no. No, no, no. You know, and listen, in some of these situations, I would not. I sit here and I would not mind to be wrong. Unfortunately, I just don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen. Now, we'll see. I'm not buying into the, the wide receiver position in the first round or going out and doing something like that. It would absolutely be shocking. Oh, yeah, here was the tweet. There's a chance that no defensive players are taken in the top 10 of the draft Thursday night, which would be a first. There has not been an NFL draft. I think this is a Siciliano tweet. Not been an NFL draft. Since 1967, without a defensive player in the top 10. That would be something right there. I think a lot of you would be on board. Because, I mean, maybe you end up getting something that, that you don't think there's an opportunity for you to have right there. No doubt about it. At JMV, I heard you talking about the Pacers, and obviously they haven't been playing good teams. But I will tell you this, they have been enjoyable to watch um, because they're winning, because they're winning with a lot of guys that you haven't seen a lot of. And, again, I'm not going to crap on it whatsoever. I'm I'm glad that they're winning. I'm glad that I'm able to tune in and watch and enjoy it. I don't want to see a team that's legitimately trying to suck. I'd rather see them play. But, um, yeah, tomorrow night, for example, you get Portland, right? Portland's coming off a loss last night at home to Memphis. Uh, We'll see who's playing for the Trailblazers. And then Thursday, Brooklyn, uh, these aren't your your run of the Millers right here. I mean, this is not Orlando. This is not Detroit. So that shall be a lot different. My goodness, four more of those. How many of these I'm going to end up doing? Like 25? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> here's, here's 20 more you can do. That's good. Yeah, getting a lot of Venturi questions in here. We'll get Rick on coming up at the top of the hour to discuss that. And cannot wait on that. 
Yeah, I saw this too, courtesy of Adam Schefter. Kyle Shanahan said that when the Niners traded up, there were five quarterbacks he was okay with taking. After going through this, I feel good about five guys at three. We started with one candidate in mind, but all have gotten better since. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, you're doing that for a reason. You're not doing that for five. Well, we got to make sure we got five. (laughs) You're doing that for a reason. You know, you're doing that for a single reason. That's one of the things I think is so enjoyable, and I never tire. I never tire of hearing about the, you know, the the sandbagging going on. Seriously, I never tire of that. I mean, you're going to make a move like that. You're making a move because you have absolutely zeroed in on somebody. You are not doing that for the heck of it. And there is no doubt about it. Uh, we shall see. That JMV over the weekend, it was a tough weekend with leg injuries. Did you happen to see the UFC fight on Saturday with Wiedemann's leg injury? Um, somebody sent it to me while I was doing the show down the hall. I saw it that way, but, you know, really, it's not like I looked directly at it. But that's pretty much enough for me. I didn't want much of a part of it. And then, you know, last night in the Pacer game, yeah, I mean, I'm just not down with it. Hey, Jason writes this, if Julio was on the move, wouldn't you think that Atlanta would take a quarterback at four? Lots of talk of them. That seems silly. They're selling off studs. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I believe that when I see it. I just certainly don't believe it around here. You know, the one thing that we talked about all the time, and we talked about this with Dane Brugler on this show, and other NFL folks, and, and Sam Monson, who joins us coming up tomorrow from Pro Football Focus, there is certainly more of a focus now on drafting what most people understand to be ready-made, ready-to-produce wide receivers out of college now more than ever. And doing that instead of trying to pay a wide-receiving veteran. It's not completely connectable or relatable to, you know, running back and, you know, the value of the running back falling off. But the value of the veteran wide receiver certainly is not on a free agent market what it once was. And it's not going to be in a pandemic season either, but it wasn't what it once was because a lot of these guys and how many are going to go in round number one wide receiver wise? Five? How many we have last year? Like eight? Probably four or five. How many year. went last year? Eight? In oh, the first round? I don't know if it was that many. I think it was six? maybe five or six. Yeah. But was the most ever last year, right? Wide receivers in so. round one? Yeah. And then if you couple wide receivers in round one and round two, I mean, it, it goes even higher. I think it was 14 or 15 in rounds one and yeah. two last year. And as they will tell you, those that cover the game say that these guys are now more than ever ready-made to come out and and produce right away. Therefore, you would rather try to go for somebody like that than you would bring in a free agent wide receiver. So I, I guess you could say devalued it. Matthew writes this, 1070 is a flamethrower right now. If you can put up with a little static, I still have you in Niles, Michigan. Well, it's unfortunate you're in Michigan, but I'm glad, Matthew, you're tuned in. It's 1070 a.m. I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but I do. Listen, I would talk about a Dixie cup and string if it means you guys were listening. If you guys had to utilize that to listen, I would tell you all about it. Let's say, yeah, that's how you need to do it. Dave from Brownsburg, my take on the Colts. We have been spoiled with generational players. With that said, tackle would be my first take, but I'd be fine with a quality corner at 21. Uh, To me, the more immediate need is that of edge rusher. But, Dave, I get what you're saying. Quick break, and we'll return. Speaking of return, Rick Venturi. We've got Rick for a while and a lot of questions regarding the Thursday round number one of the NFL draft and then some. The Colts offseason and a lot more. Rick Venturi is going to join us coming up at the top of the hour. Next.
It's the Fan Morning Show with Jeff and Big Joe. David Craig. Slick and I, being roommates, we closed a lot of bars on the road before we closed the bar. In every town, we had this last toast. And the last toast was, you're nobody until you do something for somebody else. And you know, his players felt that way. He was a great man. What an icon. The Fan Morning Show with Jeff and Big Joe. Weekday mornings at 7. On 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, JMV here for L.D. Smith Plumbing. Hey, my guy Sean was out last Wednesday. Had a little clog going on in the kitchen sink, and he yanked out of there a couple of straws and a paintbrush. Yeah, that would do it. But thank you very much to Lance and his team and for Sean for getting the job done right and then installing a brand-new garbage disposal, too. Those are just some of the, uh, I say easy as if I can do it, but it's not. What I'm trying to convey to you is this information. Large or small jobs or emergencies, the uh, local the best in L.D. Smith Plumbing is there for you at 317-284-9526. I always want you to remember this because it gives you peace of mind. There's so much going on. And the last thing you're thinking about right now is something going haywire with your plumbing. And when it does, you want to make sure somebody is there quickly and gets the job done right for a great price. And that's L.D. Smith Plumbing at 317-284-9526. Two six right now to a tankless water heater. You'll get three hundred dollars off an installation of a tankless water heater. That's going to save you money, money I should say, in energy bills, and going to give you endless gallons of hot water. Three hundred dollars off. Just mention my name with L D Smith Plumbing. Three one seven two eight four nine five two six online. L D Smith Plumbing dot com today. Today is nonstop, and suddenly your checking account is overdrawn. But what if we gave you more time on that one? At Huntington, if you accidentally overdraw your account by $50 or less, we've put a $50 safety zone in place, so you won't be charged an overdraft fee. It's one more way we're looking out for you. (laughs) So you can have time for what matters most. Huntington, welcome. $50 safety zone does not apply to returned items. Your account will be automatically closed if it remains negative for 60 days. Learn more at Huntington.com slash safety zone. Hey, it's Big Joe for your trusted local independent America standard heating and air conditioning dealer, Reinhardt Heating and Cooling. Owner Danny Reinhardt says putting his kids in charge of more of the day-to-day operations of the business was the plan all along. It makes me really proud that I know that I can turn it over to my family and they can take care of things and I've got all the confidence in the world in them and that's uh, the legacy I'm proud to leave. A great family-owned business, Reinhardt Heating and Cooling, 317-745-4526. Reinhardt's your trusted local independent American Standard dealer. Ah, it's finally time to get outside. But it's also the time when new or old injuries can start up. You know, that nagging tightness in your hips or those strains in your knee. Maybe it's also the time to start Athletico Physical Therapy. Instead of going to your doctor first, start with physical therapy. With no prescription needed, their team of experts will find the source of your pain and start healing it before it progresses so you can finally live pain-free. It all starts at Athletico Physical Therapy. Schedule your free assessment with Athletico.com. No prescription needed in most states. 93.5 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. WFNI, WIBC, HD2, W298BB, WIBC, HD3, W228CX, Indianapolis. Soccer Saturday and Indy 11. If this is your football, this is your show. Saturday at 9 on The Fan. The Ride with JMV. I want savages on the field. I want to lead the league in broken ribs. I want to put people in the hospital legally. No hitting in the head. I want them to cry and be scared to play us. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Uh, Kevin and Kevin coming up tonight at 7. Instant replay prior to that. I watched a lot of the race yesterday from St. Pete. Listen to a little bit of it, too. Shout out to Jake and Mark James and the gang down at St. Pete, which was uh, good. And yeah, we're getting closer and closer to the greatest spectacle in racing and uh, can't wait for that. Meantime, we'll jump back to that and a lot coming up a little bit later on. But on the Andy Moore Automotive Group plotline, let's welcome back to the show and back by popular demand. You ask for it, you get it. Our friend Rick Venturi with all there needs to be known about the Colts and the offseason and the upcoming draft. He joins us now. Hello, Rick. 
Hey, John, it's great to be with you. You mentioned that uh, the, the, the Grand Prix down here uh, yesterday. Uh, as you know, Jake and I visited yep. on Thursday. I had him down to my place here on the beach and then I you know I did watch the race yesterday and Herta and the and Reddy team did a did a really a great job. You know, this is uh unfortunately with COVID this hasn't gotten the um it just hasn't gotten the attention and the publicity down here, but it is a great venue for a street slash road course. I mean it's kind of it's almost like our version of Monaco, if you want to know the truth, because it's so beautiful downtown St. Petersburg. So it was really, really great to see that. And, uh, man, am I, am I fired up. You know, this week for me um, is a big week every year for the last 39 years. I mean, my first year in the league, my first draft was 1982, which also was the first year of – the National Combine, which, you know, then was run, believe it or not, in Detroit, Michigan. And so, you know, it's been 39 years later. I I approach it with the, uh, you know, the same enthusiasm. I've always loved, um, you know, the personnel end of it, you know, and I think it goes back to my college days because I never coached at really a five-star school where you were going to be in that ball game, And so, in many cases, you had to learn how to project those not just fourth-star but even three-star kids and try to project who was going to be good. And then when I went to the, the Baltimore Colts in 82, we were really a small mom-and-pop organization, even when we came to Indy two years later. And so coaches really had to get involved uh, you know, with the, with the scouting part of it. And Jimmy Ursay can tell you that. The only other guy that's been there 39 years of drafts is Jim there in town. And uh, so, you know, I got involved with it. I loved it from the very beginning. And I was always interested in how the scouts did it. I didn't come in with any biases of my own. I, I wanted to learn scouting. In other words, when, when it was the off season, I wanted to be known as a good scout, not just a coach. And I think I accomplished that, and, you know, always wherever I was over the years, I was always involved in the, the personnel aspect of it and, you know, sent out many, many times to work kids out. I always loved that part. of a matter of fact, I go back with Chris Ballard when he was a young scout with Jerry Angelo and the Bears, and I can remember him at workouts where, you know, as a coach, I, I, would, I would work people out. And you just meet so many guys. This year is so amazing. The top, you know, four of the top seven corners in the league. <laughs> I worked out their dad and coached two of them. So, <laughs> I mean, it really. But but you know, the greatest thing about this, and I'm I feel a little different this year because without the combine, I think the times are inflated, and we have so many four three nines, four three sevens, but they're all done on pro day. So I'm a little skeptical of that. But really and truly, the great thing in the combine and in the sameness of the combine, that's why I've always resisted changes to it, is you can compare uh, Daryl Green, Hall of Famer, in 1982 with J.C. Horn, who's coming out in 2021. And you can go and you can put those profiles up next to one another, those metrics, and see exactly what you get. And I just, I just love doing that. I like the, you know, the, the comparative game in that sense. So, you know, big week, uh, big week for the Venturi family. My daughter turned 50 today. My wonderful daughter, who's who's knocking it dead at San Francisco Opera, and she always whines. She always says, "Dad, I never got your full attention because I was born during draft week." So, <laughs> you know? And then, of course, the Derby is Saturday. Yep. I mean, normally that's a week later, and. So I've got to get all my bets in over here at the Downs. So very, very busy week to put Man, it mildly. There is no doubt about that. I know you guys, you're going to be a part of the coverage coming up on Thursday with Matt and Joe Wright. And I think Jeff Diamond's going to be a part of the equation Absolutely, too. So that'll yeah. be fun. Yeah, that'll be really good. Uh, we're I think I think Thursday night we're uh, we're going about seven thirty, and then uh, earlier on Friday night I think at six. And we have a really good time with that. I, I think we get a lot of great, uh, you know, opinions and talk in there. And, of course, uh, the difference in our, you know, the difference in our hours as opposed to the national coverage, and obviously they do a good job, but ours is going to be very cult-oriented. Uh, so 
you know, for the locals, I, I think it's something they want to be tuned into. Certainly if they're out driving around. Hey, before we get to the draft, and Rick Venturi is on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline, we have not had a conversation since the Colts went through free agency. And obviously we have discussed that of, of Carson Wentz. And Jim Irsay was on the show last week discussing just how important he is for this team to be good coming up this year. But what do you think about the Colts offseason in general up until this point? No, and we'll, we'll go through that. And before we go through it, I really want to congratulate you, and I'm not, I'm not blowing, blowing smoke because I think the world of you, we're good friends. We've done a million things together, but I thought that your interview with uh, Jim, I did listen to it from beginning to end. Um, I thought it was the state of the art, um, the interview this year uh, with the Colts. Uh, I thought you asked the significant questions uh, but you did it in a non-threatening, in a very professional way. You put Jim at ease, and when you put Jim at ease and let him go, you find out just how sharp he is, and there's nobody that will give you the unfiltered view, whether it's needs, whether it's draft principles, um, you know, basically the direction they're going to go. And I think it's so important because when you get an owner as opposed to a GM or a coach, They're just interested in the now. They're just interested in results. They're not interested in justifying a draft pick that you made three years ago or a decision that you made on fourth down. And particularly when you get one who really knows the game and knows the personnel game, and you could count those guys on one hand. So uh, kudos to you on that. I I, I thought that was just outstanding. And like I said, I thought thought he was great. I thought if you listen really closely, he gave you a lot of things that are, you know, kind of subtle – in the draft thing. As far as the Colts, you know, I guess I would kind of liken it to people talk about the month of March when they say in like a lion, out like a lamb. Um, You know, I think the original move, you know, when we ended the season, you know, I said to you and I said on my podcast that the needs, this was right after uh, Rivers um, and Anthony said, that's it. I said, the needs now are serious. We need a quarterback, Left tackle, um, you know, we needed a a third corner. And, and Jim, <laughs> unbelievably, as opposed to everybody else over there, said that right away yesterday. We needed a speed edge rusher. And then the fifth one would be a dynamic tight end wide receiver. But those things are really critical. And the the toughest part, which we've now seen, and I'll get into that, is those first four are premium positions and very hard to get, and we haven't even solved that yet. I think the move of Wentz was very good. I was very much in favor of that. I had looked at Stafford, Wentz, and Darnold. Those were the three guys that I knew. You know, there was a lot of speculation, but I knew those three guys, you could get them for the right price. Uh, I like Stafford greatly. Everybody knows that. But the price they paid was overwhelming. It was it was ridiculous in that sense, and there was no way that you were going to compete with that. The Darnold thing was a little bit up in the air, uh, and so the Wentz thing became very natural here. Um, and I and I I urge people to go to that uh, video that I did that's on YouTube. Just go YouTube Rick Venturi, and it's about a six and a half minute video that I took great care to do on Carson Wentz. It's about a month old, but it's, I, I think that you'll get my, my strong feelings on it. And the reason I liked the deal was I thought, number one, John, it was bold, and it said to the fan base and, more importantly, to the locker room that we're going to make this move. There's risk involved, but we're not taking a step backwards. We're going we're gonna to look at that Buffalo game and look at that meltdown with two minutes to go in the first half and say that we should have been playing, but we're not pausing this thing. We're not taking a step backwards, getting a young kid, build with him, all that stuff. There's no resetting. This is just rebooting in that regard. And, you know, Wentz has all the talent. He's very much, if you look at his metrics and his skill set, he's really a lot like Andrew Luck. I remember when he came out of Fargo, I remember writing down a comment in in my evaluation, this kid is Andrew Luck from Mayberry. And that's no disrespect for Fargo. He was just a kid that looks like Luck. He has that kind of size. He has that kind of arm. 
He has that kind of athleticism. And, and I said, this is that kind of guy. And so he goes to Philadelphia, drafted by Frank. He has the great year in 217. He's really not that bad all the way to 20, and then he falls off the deep end. Now, my excitement is, A, you're getting a guy that has done it, okay? He has done it. He's only 28 years old. Um, you know, he's coming. If, if he were coming to maybe another program, I might feel a little bit different. But I'm very confident that Frank is a quarterback whisperer when he's tight with the guy. And I think that Wentz has such a chance to recover, to reboot, and to find where he was back in 17 with Frank Reich. You know, a year ago, you know, when we signed Phillip, people were uh, they were ambiguous about that. I mean, I was myself. I, I wasn't doing jumping jacks on that. But he was able – to get Philip to play within the structure, to play within himself. Philip brought great leadership to the team. There's no question about that. And he was able to make that happen and going from a losing team to 11-5 and five in a legitimate playoff team. So there's no reason to believe, John, there's really no reason to believe that this lightning can't strike twice. And then I, I think two other things. I, I think number one, uh, I, I think number one, is that the cost is so right. I mean, you're getting him now for a rate. If he hit, if you hit on him, it, it's unbelievable what the salary is. Number two, you preserved your number one and two picks this year, and you're on the cusp of really big things, so you didn't give that up, and you give a conditional two next year. So if, if, he, if he ends up being the one, nobody's going to care about the low one that we give up because he will have played his way in. I think from his standpoint – He's coming to a perfect situation. He's coming to a top franchise in the league, fourth fourth in wins in the last 20 years. He's got a he's got a solid offensive line, solid to good. He's got a sensational young rookie. He's got a, a formidable defense. All he has to do is come in, stay within himself. As I say, trust the scheme, trust the trust the team and do his thing and let it rip and play within himself. Don't try to make every play. Don't think you have to win it every time. And and as I said to him and I said to the public, this is a city, a media, and a locker room that will accept him, and they can't wait to, to give him that opportunity. So coming from Philadelphia, which we know is a harsh market, to Indianapolis is like died and gone to heaven. So, you know, was I happy with that? Absolutely. And my thinking was is that this team had gone from below average to good, and now the next step was to go from good to great. So that first move was really good, but really the rest of the winter, the going out with the lamb, uh, you know, rather than going from good to great, has been more to me to whole serve. I mean, we, we signed a lot of our own guys. You know, that's a good thing. There isn't any, that, there's no question about that. But I don't know that you really have gotten better. And, and there's an old there's an old proverb in in the NFL: you 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 never you either get better or you get worse. You never really really stay the same. Now, albeit we have the draft coming up, and so you still have opportunities to, to get better. My only my only problem, and I understand it because the needs that I defined there. We're going to be very, very difficult to get, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit uh, in that regard. Very, very difficult to get. But when you don't fill them, when you're not able to fill them, and I'm not putting that blame on anybody, whether it's money, you know, just no fit, whatever, when you don't fit, do it in free agency, you put an undue pressure on the draft because, as Jimmy Ursay says, and he said this for 39 years, and it's always stuck with me, and, and Chris said it in another way, the draft comes to you. You don't dictate the draft. And you have to be very careful when you go into the draft that you don't go in so need conscious that you settle on a player that I would call is a red chip player, that is a good player, and you pass on a game changer. Because – if you're not going to attack free agency year in and year out for impact players, 
then you've got to get your impact players out of those out of those investment picks, which is that number one pick in high twos. After that, you're roster building, and you might get lucky, but in reality, you've got to get them from that top two. And I would feel, personally, I know that there's going to be some good players at 21, some red chip. There'll be red chip offensive tackles. There'll be red chip corners. There'll be red chip ed- edge guys. But you know what? I guarantee you there will be blue chip receivers at 21. So, you know, these are these are the things, and this is why you would have liked oh, to don't get, You're getting me all excited, Rick. Come on now. But, Come uh, on. But, uh, but here's the thing with the needs. Here's the thing with the needs. So, you know, you look at offensive tackle, and I said they don't grow on trees. I said that in January. So just look at what was done. Trent Williams, okay, he's with the Niners. The Niners, in order to keep him at left tackle, they gave him, John, the biggest contract in NFL history for an offensive lineman. Just two days ago, the Kansas City Chiefs give up four picks, including a number one for Orlando Brown, who I coached his dad at Cleveland. I'm not sure Orlando is really a legitimate left tackle. I think he's a tweener between right and left side. Four draft picks and a number one. And then if you look at this year's draft, Penny, um, Penny Sewell and uh, Slater from Northwestern, those guys are going to go in the top ten. They're going to go in the top ten to twelve picks. So if you think that you can get uh, a Sam TV or those guys, you know, kind of off the heap and, and, and actually replace a top-line guy, you, you know, you're, you're kidding yourself a little bit. And, but it's very difficult to get. And then on the edge, there were a couple edge guys that I liked, um, you know, and, and they didn't do anything on the edge. I, you know, I did like a couple of those, a couple of those guys. I, I really liked Judon. Uh, and I like Lawson, two young guys that were a little bit not as well known as uh, obviously Barrett wasn't going to get away from Tampa, and some of those guys were not going to get away. But I thought that Judon and uh, and Lawson, and, and really even Ngakwe, I know Ngakwe is a pain in the ass, but that guy can get to the quarterback better than anybody we got. And so I, I would have you know thought that. And you know, but in reality, I think what's hung over the Colts is they're so worried about getting those guys signed a year from now that they're really, really hesitant and they've kind of frozen themselves in terms of the money game. So, you know, I mean, the draft is going to be interesting. As I said, you know, in like a lion, out like a lamb. Uh, looks to me like we're holding serve. Uh, but still, uh, I think the needs that that, that, that that speed edge guy is not filled, that left tackle is not filled. Uh, and that third corner is not filled, in which Jim Irsay said himself Sunday. <laughs> yes, and uh, I do think that the Colts now, although they've been very resistant to talk about Nelson or talk about Braden, but if the draft doesn't come to them correctly, they may have to rethink, and that and that left tackle position may have to be filled from within. It's uh, Rick Vincere joining us via the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. I, I want to get back to you know the the edge rushing type of situation. I mean, Jim Mercer didn't say this with me. I think he said it prior to me. I guess earlier in the off season that Justin Houston still could be an option. I mean, you got older dudes like Kerrigan and Ingram are still out there. Do any of these trio of guys defensively float your boat at all here? Well, I would just stay with Houston because I think they're all the same at this point. You know, they're all about the same kind of rushers. They're all power forwards now. And Houston has played really well for us. And they can talk about those young guys and patience all they want. But the only guy that's been a consistent edge guy for us at all is Houston. And so, you know, what you need is speed. You need the speed ball guy off the edge, not the power forward. And listen, losing Autry is no easy loss. That is a really, really good hybrid in there that is very, very hard to replace. And so, you know, if anything, you're a little bit backward. Then if you let Houston go, I mean, you're dealing with the Banagos and the Toure's and all these guys. And, I, you know, I mean, the reason we're in this jam is none of those guys have done anything, you know, really. I mean, and they're all number two picks. They haven't done anything. It's just like corner. You know, we've got Yassin, we've got uh, – uh, Wilson, none of them have done anything. So, you know, that's five number two picks. And, 
you know, it, and, and that's why you're a little bit in that jam. But, again, the, the, that edge rusher and that left tackle, those are high investment players, either either in terms of money in free agency or high picks in the draft. Rick, what did you think about T.Y. Hilton coming back? Well, I thought that that was a natural – you know, he had a flat market. He didn't have a big market. You know, he's down to 52 catches a year. I like T.Y. I've always been a defender of T.Y. Um, I think T.Y. did suffer to some degree. Uh, I thought Phillip, again, did a great job, but he changed the dynamics of the passing game. Uh, with Phillips, you know, it was get it out and spread it out, and that ball went out quick to whoever was open really quickly, and that was not T.Y.'s game. That's just not his game. Uh, might he be better now? Uh, with Wentz, who I think is more luck-like in the sense that he will push it downfield. Uh, because if you don't do that, then Hilton is not a real valuable player. Hilton is not a catch-and-run guy. He's not really even a great route guy. What Hilton is is a big-time down the field, in the seam, in the over route. He can run that deep comeback, and he is really good at that. But if you got to if you're going to utilize that, you need a quarterback, A, that will hold it long enough, and there's always the delicate balance, hold it hold it too long, and that will get the ball downfield. Otherwise, he's diminished down to a 52-catch guy, and that's why I, I was next to positive that they would keep him because I knew that market was never going to be really very – it was going to be pretty flat. And what Chris basically did, and it, it's smart. He's, he's smart that way. He basically told those guys, you know, uh, we want you all – but if you can get a better deal, get it. If not, you know, here and, 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 and good PR. And so we were able to recapture a lot of those guys. Yeah, you know, it's funny about Autry. You brought him up, and he, all along I thought that he was probably going to walk. And then right before free agency began, I was told that he'd become, you know, a part of their, their focus. Um, and that kind of surprised me. And then, you know, he ends up in Tennessee – and wasn't very happy seemingly about being there and wasn't very happy with the Colts. So I, I don't know what that told me, but it, it seems like things were kind of odd, I guess, leading yeah, to his I, exit. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand that. I think he was a part of that. If you can, if you can do better, uh, if you can do better, do better. Uh, and I think in his case, he had no trouble doing better. I know Tennessee – uh, you know, I know them pretty well. They're very thrilled to get him because it's hard to get a guy that is a starting edge guy on first down that can play the run, that can give you decent edge play, but then becomes a big factor on passing downs in your sub defenses inside. And so, really, you lost. I just why I call him a hybrid. You lost a guy that can bring power to first down and then can bring that big length in there on third down. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, you know, Tennessee was just, you know, ready to make a, a better offer on him quickly. And, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to see him a couple times a year. It's uh, Rick Venturi. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a break, and I want to come back. I'm going to tease this up and then bring you back here about 21. And the position – because there are a couple of things in play here, Rick. One is people nationally are saying now that maybe in the top 10 there will not be one defensive player selected. Therefore, these guys from edge rusher to corner that we're talking about could slide – to 21 i want to get your thoughts on that and if if rick you think this team in this draft can wait until 54 to select their left tackle of the future so i'm going to put you on hold and we'll come back with rick venturi all the conversation about the colts you want to hear off season and draft continues coming up next 93.5 107.5 and 1070 the fan a reading from the golden oak lending book of mortgage lingo what is a cash out refi it's using the equity in your home to pay off high interest credit cards paid it off yes i'm james hawkins president of golden oak lending with mortgage rates at a low 2.25 percent you can save hundreds each month and skip your next two payments you'll pay nothing out of pocket and we never charge for a home appraisal if we can't close your loan and remember, our local lending experts speak mortgage and love translating for our customers. Eliminating debt means putting your dreams back on the table today. Updated bathroom? 
updated bathroom and a pool table? Don't push it, Rick. Get started with our fast and easy zip line tool at goldenoaklending.com. NMLS 114937, 2.25% fixed, 3.195% APR, FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. Hey, Indy, Tim Pearson here, founder of Chattanooga Whiskey. After years of developing our own rich malt forward style of bourbon, we call Tennessee High Malt, we bring you Chattanooga Whiskey 111. The bold, unfiltered, 111 proof bourbon we fell in love with, straight from the cask into your favorite sipping glass. With notes of chocolate covered cherries, toasted coconut, and butterscotch, we hope you'll love it as much as we do. Ask about us at your favorite local retailer or bar. Drink Chattanooga Whiskey 111, enjoy responsibly. Siri, read me that text. Sorry, I can't complete your request. You want me to read that? No, I got it. Construction zone. I see it. Watch out! Watch it! Oh! You oh my god! You're gonna hit him! Oh, fuck! When driving in a construction zone, be smart, be alert, be in the zone. This is Ward Daniels, business manager of Labor's Local 120. Everyone deserves a safe place to work. Do your part in the cone zone. Slow down, open your eyes, pay attention. A message from Indiana's District Council of Laborers International Union of North America and affiliated locals. Hey, JMV and football fans, the 2021 draft is right around the corner, and FanDuel Sportsbook is hooking new users up with 20 to 1 odds on Trevor Lawrence being drafted number one. How crazy is that? That means a $5 bet wins you $100 when you bet on the projected number one pick. The biggest lock of the draft, you put an extra $100 in your pocket just for betting it. How about that? So, to claim your exclusive offer, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Sign up today using my promo code JMV. FanDuel Sportsbook promo code JMV to claim your exclusive 20 to 1 odds on Trevor Lawrence to be drafted number one. You heard it right. Just be sure to use the promo code JMV. Uh, must be 21 plus. Present in Indiana. New users only must wager and designated offer. Market $10 first deposit required. Max bet $5. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 9 with it. Hey, it's Big Joe for your trust local independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning dealer, Kirby Heating and Air Conditioning. Robert Kirby says the dependability of American Standard products is not by accident. American Standard, they're doing more research and development. They have it tested in the field. So when it comes out, there's just not very many problems. I mean, we get a new product line on a new furnace, and it's just very reliable. And Kirby is very reliable at 317-892-3614. Kirby Heating and Air Conditioning is your trusted local independent American Standard dealer. Amazon is hiring near you, looking for team members who know that their work is important and that every package matters. Find a job that fits your life with competitive wages, reliable hours, and benefits. Let's work together, from boxing it up to sending it on its way. Every step offers a different role and schedule. So, are you ready to work together in your community? Visit Amazon.com apply to see what's available. That's Amazon.com apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. This ad for Hellsberg Diamonds has been specifically written for those who'd rather think about golf than engagement rings. If you're sizing up a par four with a serious dog leg, you might ask your caddy for some expert advice on the best way to get to the pin. Well, if the pin was an engagement ring, your caddy is one of our diamond experts at Hellsberg. They can help guide you through our wide selection of high quality diamonds from natural to lab grown, so you can be confident that you're bringing your A game. Visit your local Hellsberg store and ask about our amazing financing options or check us out at hellsberg.com. If you're serious about selling your home, call Mark Deedle and his team today at 317-755-4232 or online markdeedle.com. That's Mark D-I-E-T-E-L.com today. At HewLoan.com, we pay for the appraisal and can close your VA loan in as little as 14 days. Apply online today at HewLoan.com. NMLS number 1326 the Ride with JMV. Thank you for your support. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, welcome back. Rick Cherry rejoins on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. So I gave you a couple of different scenarios before the break here. And one yeah. is, I, I mean, left tackle. Do you need, can you wait 
until 54 to draft that left tackle of the future, or do you have to find something well prior to that? Oh, I mean, I think if you wait till 54, I mean, you will have a left tackle, but it's, it, it isn't going to be a plug-and-play guy. It's not going to be a guy that, re, that replaces uh, Costanzo. There isn't any doubt about it. Here, here's what I see, at the, uh, here's what I see at, the, at the tackle position offensively. Okay, I think this is, this is my own opinion, and I do my own scouting. I, I, don't, I, you know, I, I, I listen to other people, but I do what I think, and my final board is my board. I think there are three what I call blue-chip players. Now, a blue-chip player is a guy that you check all the boxes, okay? He's got really good tape. His metrics, that is 40 time, all the metrics, the, the short shuttles, all the things that I look at, internal, kind of the internal numbers that give you an athletic quotient are there. Uh, football intelligence, FBI is number three. And then the fourth, it's, I call them the four pillars, is he a 16 Sunday guy, character, work ethic, all those type of things, and does he pass the electricity test, meaning when you're with him, does he turn you on or does he not turn you on? I mean, it, you know, and I call it the electricity test, because if there's a guy that you're with all afternoon and you just, you just don't, you can't make it with him, you don't want to go there. I remember I drafted Jeff Arad back way back when, simply because I had spent two days with him, and I just said, this guy has something about him that he is going to make it. So I think there's three blue-chip guys. I think they'll all be gone by 21. Uh, Sewell will be in the lottery. Slater from Northwestern will be close to the lottery. And then I think Vera Tucker, Oliveira Tucker, will be somewhere around 15 to 20. He's uh, he you know he's a guard or left tackle. At this point, all three of those guys could come in and be your left tackle. You, he, they could be your left tackle, and you could go on and you would have a good offensive line, and you wouldn't have to move anybody. But the chances of anybody slipping there, the only chance might be Vera Tucker. Okay, then you draw a bit of a line. There's a line there. And now you go to what I call the red chip players, okay? Those are players that have most of the qualification, but there's a limiting factor. There's something that you're not sure of or you don't like, or there's just a negative that takes you out of that first tier. And that doesn't mean that a red chipper can't become a a blue chipper. Now, the top guy there and a guy that Colts could be looking at at 21 is is Christian Derisaw from Virginia Tech. Now, he's a big, big man at 325 who's a good athlete. Uh, as a matter of fact, my good buddy Mike Dettelier, who does counting down in Louisiana, says he's a $22.50 cab ride to get around because he's so big. I had an NFL coach that I know who was at his workout tell me, Rick, he's 235 and he looks – he's 325 – and he looks like he's 275. In other words, he's clean. He is a really good kid. The only thing that separates me a little bit with Darasaw is that I think his feet are a little bit heavy at times, at times, and yet other times he shows it. I think his performance and slash effort is uneven. In other words, there's times that he looks like Chris Hinton or Art Shell, you know, and then there's other times he just kind of disappears in the game and just looks normal. Now, I think if you, if you can get to him, and you, I think he's a guy you're going to have to stay on his butt. Not that he's a bad kid, but I think there's a, a part of him that needs to be driven and pushed every friggin' second. And I think if you're confident that, uh, that you can do that, if you're confident that you can do that, he may be worthy of it, you know. I think the other guys that are right in that cluster, people call it clouds now, if you want to take a right tackle who's valuable in that late one, it's the Jenkins kid from Oklahoma State. I mean, he is a beast. Uh, he, he is intolerable on the running game. I mean, he will get after your ass. He is a strong guy. He, to me, he's played a little left tackle in college, but he is a right tackle. If you went with something like that, 
then you would have to entertain the possibility of taking Braden and kicking him over to the left side. And then the third guy that's in that tier is Cosme from Texas. Now, Cosme is a workout warrior. I mean, he, he would make Costanzo's uh, combine look like a, you know, look, look like a, a ham and egger. I mean, you know, he runs in the four eights. He benches through, you know, 36. He's got short shuttles. He's got vertical jumps. He really is a great athlete. He doesn't always play that way. He plays a little bit. He relies on his strength. And, you know, sometimes he doesn't have really good bend. He's not as good a technician as that kind of athlete should be. But those three guys are right in that next tier after that first three. And you have to think long and hard about them. And then guys that I like as you get into that second round and third round, and most of these guys would be guys that I would call Morse Reservoir All-Stars. These guys are guys with talent, but they're probably not NFL ready. They will take development. And I don't know that we're, you know, when you say 54 and you take a developmental guy, they don't turn me on, okay? But here's the four guys that I like that are Morse Reservoir All-Stars that I think have talent to become really good. Jackson Carmen uh, from Clemson. Don't have the numbers on him right now because he had a little bit of a back surgery, so he doesn't. Uh, he does. He does. He did test. Uh, he he reminds me a lot of Darisaw. They block out the sun. Big man with athleticism. Spencer Brown is a six nine kid out of Northern Iowa. Plays right tackle, but he runs like a four eight five verticals out of the gym. This is a great athlete that has put on about eighty pounds that, you know, I think he's a project, but he's a guy with great, great talent. Then you got Raddins, the kid from North Dakota State, and then a kid I also like is Christensen uh, out of Brigham Young. Now, there's other guys. There's good players like Little and some of those guys that people will talk about, and they're all going to be drafted pretty well. I mean, this is a deep draft if you think of it as a second-round draft. But on the elite, on the elite part of it, there's three guys – and then you have to make up your mind what you where you put Darisol. That's that answers that answers the offensive line thing. But if you if you wait till fifty four, you will get a very solid player. But you get, you may get more of a developmental kind of guy, or you will get a guy that you're not sure you can trust that left tackle. So you you think if, if Darisol is off the board at twenty one, then we may end up seeing them uh, trade down maybe. But certainly if they draft to twenty one, let's just say for the sake of the argument here. Uh, going with an edge edge rusher. Yeah, well, that's the thing. See, when you get when you know that what what the civilians don't understand, John, is the board will be set. You know, and, and however it's set, first round, second round, people do it different ways. You know, I always do it: blue chip, red chip, uh, green chip, and then uh, gray chip. Okay, so in other words, if those three linemen are there, let's say that Quiddy Payne is up there as a defensive end. Let's say there's six receivers that are in that blue chip, okay? And then you come down to red chip, and you got edge rushers. Like, I don't think I, – I think there's a lot of edge rushers with really good traits. But trust me on this. I mean, th- there's no Chase Young. There's no Miles Garrett in this class. There's, no, there's nobody that you put on that tape and – you can see 30 foot of tape and you say, wow, that guy is the guy. Now you see guys with really good traits. And if you roll the dice and hit on the right guys, now some of those guys are going to be available at 21. I think myself, let's, let's just go edge rush while you brought it up. I think Quiddy Payne is, is the safest. I think he's got size. He's got speed. He runs a 4.52 at 270. He can turn the edge. Uh, he's got tremendously high football intelligence, high character. You know, he, he, he's got a great story behind him. Uh, he's got the size and speed, and I think the tape to be that blue chipper. I, I think he will be the first edge guy off the board. I think the guy that then is next – that is very close to me. He's in the red category for a couple reasons, and that is Phillips. Phillips is really probably 
the best pure speed edge rusher in the draft, and he's got good size with it. You know, uh, Phillips is is six five, two fifty six. You know, he ran in the four fives, uh, four five six. So he can go and he can run you down, and and so I think Phillips is pretty much pretty close to pay. The biggest problem, and I'm sure Chris has this worked out, is you have the injury factor. You have the concussion factor after UCLA. You've got those kinds of issues with him, which I personally don't know directly. That's something that I don't get what I used to get in coaching. So that I don't get. But I know on tape, to me, it's pay. To me, it's Phillips. I think one of those guys could be there at 21. Then, guys, I think there's six guys that you have to think about. I love Ojulari. I love him from Georgia. I think he's the best pure rusher, best pure rusher, not necessarily the fastest, not the biggest, the best pure rusher out of Georgia, the best body control, dip-and-go guy. But the problem with Ojulari is he's 6'3", 240. And what happens is that's why I drop his rating down into the Reds because a lot of times when you get in that Sunday game as opposed to that Saturday game, smaller guys can get lost. Derek Thomas was one of the few guys that was a small guy by stature in terms of weight, but with his speed, which was like 4-4, he could turn the corner, run the edge, and come back down. But a lot of the smaller guys, when they're a little bit undersized, they tend to get engulfed by big NFL tackles. So, you know, he's an interesting guy, with, but a little bit small. Tryon is a very interesting guy out of Washington at 6'4". Uh, you know, he's 6'4", he's 250. He ran a 4'6'4", 35 vertical jump. Now, he's a good kid at this part. He's, got, he's clean injury-wise, tough-wise, play all day. Not truly a speed rusher off the edge. That's the only thing. He's more like a Houston. He can get to the edge, but he's more of a power rusher. But he is like pay. He's a safe pick if you want a guy that you know is going to be solid. Maybe not light it up, but solid. And he's going to play for you because he's got all the other stuff. you know. And then there's, there's a couple guys that are interesting. I like Osai from Texas. Uh, he worked out really, really well. Uh, he ran good. He's 6'4", 245, doesn't have a big football background, took it up late, uh, runs well, can get to the quarterback, 41-5 vertical. I mean, he can really go. He's very raw. He has no refinement at this point, but I think he's the sleeper on the edge. I really do. Uh, that's Joseph Osai. And then the most interesting guy in the on the edge – the most interesting guy is obviously um, is, is Jason Owe from Penn State. This is a, you know, if you, if you go on a workout, this guy is the freak of freaks. I mean, he runs, you know, at, at, whatever, at whatever size, at 6'5", 255. This guy ran a 4'39". This guy went through the bags. He does all the work. He did everything. I mean, it, it was, you know, it's, it's like a miracle. But I don't, I don't necessarily see that on the tape. You know, he did have seven sacks the year before, no sacks last year. So there's, you got to make a decision. Do I roll the dice? And I think some person, some people might roll the dice and take him as the top edger, edge rusher, and just say we're going to take this phenomenal freak and we're going to coach him. And and if you justify it that way, you can do it. But those, those are the six guys. And as I said, I, I don't see anybody in there that's a, a Miles Garrett or, or, or a Chase Young who you just look at that tape in a very short time and say, knock you out. But there are guys that are going to be available on that 21st pick. Now, you know, when you go much lower – uh, that's what I. Then you'll get much lower, to be honest with you. So, Rick Venturi, our draft conversation on a Monday via the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. Uh, really quick, and then I got to hit a break. And and John McClain wanted me to ask you this about the corner position. I wasn't going to tease it, but I, I wanted to get just a quick mm -hmm. little dab of your thoughts because Jim mentioned this to me last Wednesday 
Uh, and just out of the blue about the corner position, having two and needing three. And right. it sounded a hell of a lot like that there was zero trust in Rocky Asin moving forward here. Is that logical in and around 21 if there's defensive player slippage? Well, let's go to the let's go to the corner position. I don't know if you want to take that or take the break. If you if you want me to go to the corner position, I, I tell you I what, you, you got. I tell you what, we'll take a break and come back and have you explain the corner position. Yeah. I thought John yeah. McClain had a really good question about the corner since that's what Jim brought up on his right. own last Wednesday. Absolutely, and that's I've tried to take the left tackle and the edge rush and the left and the and the third corner in such detail so that everybody and the fans know exactly what we're looking at in those need positions. All right, Rick, back with you in just a second. Rick Venturi and your draft primer for the 2021 NFL Draft. Rick and Matt and Joe Wright and Jeff Diamond, the former uh, general manager in the NFL, all a part of the coverage coming up. That's on WIBC on Thursday because we have a Pacer game right here. Quick break, and we'll come back and answer that corner question for you and more. If you got anything uh, inside the lounge, you got anything, JMV at 1070thefan.com via email or at JMV1070 on Twitter. Drop it in with 93.5, 107.5 and 1070 the fan. The savings are in full bloom on every new and pre-owned vehicle at Hubler. Spring into something new at all Hubler locations. Visit drivehubler.com. Kids, tell your parents about Forum Credit Union's Sprout of the Month contest, where you could win $100 in a Sprout account. Details at 1075thefan.com. A reading from the Golden Oak Lending Book of Mortgage Lingo. What is a no-charge appraisal? It's never asking for a credit card or charging for a home appraisal if we can't close your loan. No risk on refinancing, but I live for danger. I'm James Hawkins, president of Golden Oak Lending. Refinancing with Golden Oak is anything but risky business. And with our mortgage rates at a low 2.25%, you can save hundreds each month and skip your next two payments. And remember, our local lending experts speak mortgage and love translating for our customers. Removing risk from your next purchase or refi means you can find your thrills elsewhere. Skydiving? No. Cliff jumping. Wait, hang gliding. Aren't you afraid of heights? Stop. You're embarrassing me. Get started today with our simple zipline tool at goldenoaklending.com. NMLS 114937, 2.25% fixed, 3.195% APR, FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. Hey, JMV here for my friend Mark Deedle. It's Mark Deedle Realty today at 317-755-4232. MarkDeedle.com. Mark, D-I-E-T-E-L.com. All right. So you hear all the time, right, about what is a robust housing market, whether you want to upgrade or you want to downsize. Let Mark get you into it because it's only as good as the person you have representing you in the sale of your home or when you're out there trying to either downsize or or upgrade. I'll give you a great example. If I were doing either one, Mark Dito is who I would call because he is perfectly fit to do both for you. Whether you have a graduating senior that may be moving out and you need to downsize, 317-755-4232 is the number you need to call. And I think about this a lot too. I live out the way that it is, but maybe moving further out, getting more property, getting a larger place for a larger family it is Mark Deedle, the guy that's going to make sure that he gets the results for you. Hey, reach out. Give him a call today. 317-755-4232. Again, markdeedle.com. 317-755-4232. Online, that's markdietel.com today. <laughs> BetMGM welcomes you to Showtime with a risk-free first bet up to $600. Simply sign up and use bonus code MGM600 and you're on your way to betting with the king of sportsbooks. Plus, with BetMGM's new one-game parlay feature, you can choose from hundreds of bet types and combinations within a single game to build a perfect parlay. All the action on all your favorite sports will be at your fingertips when you download the app or go to betmgm.com and use bonus code MGM600 to make your first bet risk-free up to $600. Bet with confidence and turn game day into payday at BetMGM. New customer offer, paid and free bets. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years or older to wager. 
you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Today is non-stop. And suddenly, your checking account is overdrawn. But what if we gave you more time on that one? At Huntington, if you accidentally overdraw your account by $50 or less, we've put a $50 safety zone in place, so you won't be charged an overdraft fee. It's one more way we're looking out for you. <laughs> so you can have time for what matters most. Huntington, welcome. $50 safety zone does not apply to returned items. Your account will be automatically closed if it remains negative for 60 days. Learn more at Huntington.com slash safety zone. Join me tomorrow, Jason Benetti. I have something to do. He's going to join us. Also, Chappie, we're going to get you ready for the draft. I can't wait. We're also going to talk AFC South. Join me tomorrow. The Ride with JMV. I want you out in front of the school with her. I'd like to have a few words with you, by God. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, yo, welcome back. Hey, if you mentioned Jim Irsay, or I should say if you missed him last week, you can uh, catch the podcast, 107.5thefan.com. The reason why I bring that up again, John McClain had asked this about corner at number 21 overall, and Rick Venturi rejoins, of course, Rick and Matt, Joe Wright, Jeff Diamond, all a part of the broadcast for round number one coming up on Thursday. It can be heard on WIBC. So I'll I put it to you this way. I mean, there's a possibility some corners are going to be there. You know, Jim had mentioned the scenario of having two and needing three. A, what is he, what do you think that means regarding Rock Yassin? And B, do you think logically they might think about doing that at 21? Well, Jim, Jim is unfiltered, just like I am, and all you have to do is watch Rocky Sin for the last two years and not trust it. I mean, you know, it, it gets hard to watch after a while when every other play is a holding penalty. And, you know, and that comes with the territory. When you're a corner, a young corner, and you're a 4-5-plus guy in the 40, you are going to hold. You are, you are going to play from recovery, and, and that's why, to me, and, and I'm a little bit different than them on this, is speed has to be a premium at the corner because every young corner is, is got to outrun his mistakes He's gonna because he's going to make them, he's going to get beat on release, and he's got to trust his speed. And those that have speed will trust that those that don't will grab and hold and everything else. And so, you know, I, I think it is what it is. You know, at the end of the season last year, we went with Kerry because Kerry was at least sounder. Uh, you know, we didn't really help him. I mean, in the playoff game, we left him one-on-one -on -one out there with Diggs and let him get beat, which to me, that's a system issue. Uh, but at least Kerry was an upgrade. Now, we re-signed Kerry, and so, you know, I think you have a playable guy. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's a true top outside three corner I, I think he was an above average nickel and I've said this all along if I could find a top three corner okay I would have very much considered on on nickel defense leaving Kenny on the outside despite being a good nickel and put Kerry on the inside because at least you would not have a liability out there you may not be as good in one position but you wouldn't have a liability and people you know, people, as the years have gone on, I, th I mean, I thought Pittsburgh was going to wear that side of the field out. So, you know, Jim is just unfiltered. Jim is not going to protect, you know, anybody or talk about any of that stuff. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. I watch it every day. Now, in terms of the corner position this year, this is a strong position. In terms of blue-chip guys, Blue chip guys, and you made a good point. Uh, we didn't believe, we didn't labor it, but about offensive guys going early like Pitts and Chase, you know, and Sewell. Those guys are going to go right with the quarterbacks early, and so defenders can slip a little bit. It is possible for the defenders to slip. Now, basically, there are three what I consider my blue chip guys. The the guys that are basically not flawed that again have it all have everything have that great speed now the consensus pick will be certain a lot of people think that certain will be in the top 10 you know maybe higher uh he's the alabama corner he reminds me of humphreys except bigger i worked his father his father played 11 years uh with the miami dolphins 
out of southern Mississippi. Uh, he's got good metrics. Uh, he at, at six foot two. Uh, he ran a, a four four two the other day. Uh, you know, he, he benched eighteen thirty nine vertical. Uh, he's got a lot going for him. He's one of the best. He may be the best technician coming out of college in years, maybe a decade. Now, that's a product of having talent and playing for Nick Saban. Nobody coaches the corner. He, co- he coaches him personally. Nobody coaches corners better than Nick Saban. And Sertain is a product of that. Plus, he's genetically, he's got it all. He's got the pedigree. He's qualified. I'm not as high on him because I think the ceiling is reached. He's not, most of those Alabama corners are not going to get any better. Now, he's good enough, and he's got great character. The only thing that I see him, and this is something I've really put an emphasis on lately, is he grabs a lot. For a guy that talented, he grabs a lot. And what happens in college is that grabbing penalty is only 15 yards, even if it's downfield. And I would love to see them go to our, our rule someday where that's a 60-yard penalty because I think those guys actually teach those guys to grab if they're beat. And, you know, what happens when they get to this league, that, that ain't making it. But Sertain is going to be a top pick. The other guy, and I love him, he's my number one. I'm a little bit biased because I had his father. I know the pedigree. I like J.C. Horn out of South Carolina. You know, he, he is six foot two oh five. He ran a 437. 19 bench press, 41 and a half vertical, 33 inch arm. You're, you're talking about a great raw athlete. At the moment, Sertain will probably come in and be better because he's more polished and he's ready to go. I'm not sure that in time, Horn isn't the best prospect. But both of those guys will probably not make it to 21. It's a premium position. Left tackle, edge rush, cornerback, premium positions, okay? That's why it takes investments to get them. The third guy, and he might slip a little because he had a a little bit of a back surgery, terrific athlete, is Caleb Farley. I have him as a blue chipper. He may slip a little. Uh, He wasn't able to work out for people, so... Up-to-date numbers aren't there, but he was a great athlete at Virginia Tech. And I I list those top three guys. Now, the guy that has crept in, the guy that has crept in into, uh, I think, the first round and, you know, is is knocking on the door, okay, is the kid from Northwestern, uh, Newsom. I I think he has now been – I think consensus-wise, people will say that he is number four. Uh, he's very smooth. Uh, he's a tough kid, smart guy, plays the outside. When I watched him on tape, my only question, because he wasn't, he didn't press as much as a certain or as a horn. And I, my, my question, I remember writing it was, you know, can he really run? Can he recover? And then in his pro day, he ran a four, three, eight. So he discounted any worries about that. And so I think you're looking at, I think you're looking at four first-round corners right there. That's what, that's what I think it is. I think you have four first-round corners, and it's a question of Farley's health. Are you considering that? And would you consider Newsom at 21? Uh, I, I think he's going to be in that cluster. I, I don't see Horn or Sertain making it there. Now, after that, there are still – some pretty good kids when you get into the second and third round. Uh, Asante Samuels Jr., whose dad, you know, was a longtime player in the league, you know, had a great workout at Florida State. He's not, uh, you know, he's not quite uh, as, as tall as some of those guys, but he's 5'10", 180, but he can fly uh, quick as hell. Uh, tough kid, plays some nickel. Um, you go from there, there's the two Georgia kids, um, are, are, are outstanding. They're, they're really, really fast. Stokes and Campbell. Stokes ran a 4.29 on a pro day, 38 and a half vertical. Tyson Campbell, 6'2, 185. I think most people rate them right after that first group. Uh, you got the uh, Robinson kid from Central Florida, 4.39 corner. I mean, you got a lot of speed. 
guys that can play and guys that are good players. Um, Adebo out of uh, Stanford, uh, he ended up running better than I thought he was. He's an interception machine. So there, there's a lot of guys. Uh, you know, I think the corner is not only a quality position at the top, I think it's a deep position. I really do. Even Molden, whose dad I drafted at New Orleans, a little bit, I'd probably move him to safety. He's a, you know, he ran a 4-5-4. Four, four. I, I don't, I'm not really interested in corners that are slower than 4-5 unless you're a veteran who really knows what he's doing. But Melon Fonwu at Stanford, Graham at Oregon. I mean, there's just a lot, a lot of corners uh, to be interested in in this draft. It's, a, I think, a very good corner draft with, I think, four legit first-round guys. Hey, Rick, really quick, I need to take a break, but I, I, I want one one quick thing, one final thing with you, and it regards tight end, and here's why. Because the only one anybody's talking about is Kyle Pitts, and he's going to be off the board, assuming by number five. And Jim Mersey was specific right after the season in talking about needing an upgrade at tight end, and clearly they're not going to find that in the draft. And I want to ask you about – Zach Ertz, if Zach Ertz becomes available, is he somebody you think could add production-wise at that position to this team? Can you hold out for me for a minute? Absolutely. It's uh, Rick Venturi back on the other side. We'll close it out with you next, 93.5, 107.5, 1070, the fan. Football fans, the 2021 draft is right around the corner Thursday night, and FanDuel Sportsbook is hooking new users up with 20-to-1 odds on Trevor Lawrence to go number one overall. That's crazy, right? That means a $5 bet wins you $100 when you bet on the projected number one pick. Biggest lock of the draft. Put an extra 100 in your pocket just for betting that. Now, to claim this exclusive offer, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, sign up using promo code WFNI. You can also make a variety of different bets when you do that, from top picks at each position to who you think your team will pick and many, many more. Put on your GM hat, download FanDuel Sportsbook, the app today, to lock in your picks. Remember, use the promo code WFNI to claim exclusive 20-to-1 odds on Trevor Lawrence being number one overall. Must be 21 and over and present in Indiana for new users only. Must wager in designated offer market. $10 first deposit required. Max bet $5. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Hammer here for Indy's hometown sportsbook, Bet Rivers. They have updated the app. So go to your app store and download Bet Rivers, Indiana. If you had the app previously, make sure it's up to date. If you are an IndyCar fan, know that you can bet on the IndyCar races at Bet Rivers. That's in addition to Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, and more. Download Bet Rivers, Indiana today. Must be 21 and over, a resident of Indiana. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1 800 9 with it. Hey, Johnny for L.D. Smith Plumbing. That's Lance and his team. The absolute best if you need anything large or small, any type of plumbing emergency, make sure you always have that number ready at 317-284-9526. Had him out to my place last week to fix a drain and to add a garbage disposal. And I got a couple of more projects I'm working on, too, and there is nobody else I'm going to use. It's L.D. Smith Plumbing always for me. And you should, too. And also, keep this in mind, right now you can take $300 off a tankless water heater that gives you endless amounts of hot water and is energy efficient, meaning it's going to save you money. $300 off right now. Tell them I sent you, 317-284-9526. That's Lance and his local team at L.D. Smith Plumbing today. Online, ldsmithplumbing.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly with TheHomeLoanExpert.com. Mortgage interest rates have started to rise. The good news is, at the Home Loan Expert office, we are still locking loans in the twos. Have you thought about a refinance? Dropping your mortgage rate, saving a couple hundred bucks a month, or pulling out the cash to pay off the credit cards or make those big home improvement projects a reality? How much can you save? Let's find out now. The Home Loan Expert. The Home Loan Expert LLC, NMLS number 1326241. 
Hi, my name is John Hassey, and I am owner of Hassey Construction and president of Northwest Indiana Contractors Association. Every year, some unethical construction companies illegally pay workers cash under the table. That puts businesses Nuweka represents that provide a good living wage, pay payroll taxes, and employ benefits at a major competitive disadvantage. These companies rob our state of over $405 million every single year. Imagine what could be done for Hoosiers with that money. Please visit indianacip.com backslash tax fraud to learn how you can take a stand. Here's a question that certainly crossed your mind. Do I need a financial planner? Well, let's see. Do you want to comfortably retire someday? Does market volatility make you nervous? Are you coming into some money? Are you divorced, widowed, or facing a major life event? If you said yes to any of these, call 888 Plan Rick right now. Because, yes, you need a financial planner. Now's a great time to get one because you can schedule a free retirement review with an experienced planner at Edelman Financial Engines. You'll get objective advice on your investments and answers to all the retirement questions you've been wondering about. You'll also get a comprehensive financial plan to help you reach your goals, an $800 value free. Call 888-PLAN-RIC by Tuesday, 10 p.m. for a free retirement review and a free financial plan worth $800 built just for you to help you live a more secure future. That's 888-PLAN-RIC or visit edelmanfinancialengines.com. Indy's favorite sports bettors advantage is the free PropSwap app. PropSwap is where America buys and sells sports bets. This is Kevin Bowen and I use it. Download the PropSwap app today. Do you need air conditioning service and need to find a local well-trained expert you could trust like Bassett Services Heating and Air Conditioning? Find that American Standard Air Dealer at IndyHomeComfort.com. 93.5 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. WFNI, WIBC, HD2, W298BB, WIBC, HD3, W228CX, Indianapolis. Who will the Colts select in the first round of the NFL Draft? Coverage Thursday night at 7 on 93 WIBC. The Ride with JMV. And the beat goes on, yeah. And the beat goes on. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Welcome back. That coverage got you covered coming up on Thursday with the first round of the NFL draft. Matt Taylor, Joe Wrights, Jeff Diamond, and our friend Rick Venturi, who's been with us through the 4 o'clock hour and a little bit more here in the 5 o'clock hour, rejoins us via the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. All right, the assumption is that Trey Burton's not going to be back. Uh, He was there a year ago at tight end. Jim had mentioned that he wanted more of a dynamic tight end. And let's face it, they're not going to find more of a dynamic tight end, so you're going to have to put together again the pieces that you have, which means Mo Alley cox and Jack Doyle. But might you be able to wait out a release at some point from Philly of Zach Ertz? Could that fill any type of tight end gap production-wise that they could use? Well, there's no question about that Ertz is a very valuable hybrid tight end. Hertz is a lot like Burton in that, and probably better than Burton over the long haul, in that Hertz is an outstanding possession receiver. He is an outstanding route runner. I mean, he is a guy that can run the angles, the Zampezis, the jerk routes. He's not a stretch the field guy. I mean, he can run the seam and he can catch it, but he is really – a very good guy in the red zone. He's a really good guy in those third and five, third and six downs uh, where uh, individual one-on-one matchups, footwork, uh, the ability to run routes, the ability to pivot and then catch the ball. That's what Ertz's game is. Ertz isn't uh, you know, like the kid that we had that scored the 13 touchdowns and scored the 10 in the red zone, the guy that – kind of laid it down on us like I, his name escapes me right now the guy that went to Pittsburgh from us but uh, uh Ebron Ebron yeah he, he's not he isn't a dynamic downfield guy like an Ebron and th- those guys don't come along unfortunately we couldn't corral it and he wouldn't let it happen but Ertz is a valuable guy and understand the context he's a real real uh, a, a possession guy. Now, you're right, you're exactly right. You know, this draft is not, you know, there's a lot of kids that you may take later. Obviously, maybe the best to come down the pipe 
in years and years and years the most dynamic kid that I've seen come out at tight end. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't even tell you how long is, is the Kyle Pitts kid out of Florida. And, you know, he is going to be maybe – the first non-quarterback taken, or he, you know, he's going to be in that lottery. He just, he is just a phenomenal player. That is a dynamic tight end. That is yeah. a guy that can score points from anywhere on the field. I'll tell you the one guy that I like, and I've talked to Tony Dungy about this. Tony and I had a conversation about this, and he wasn't featured, but a guy that I really like is Tommy Tremble at Notre Dame. You know, at six. 6'3 and 3'8, 241. But Tommy runs a 4'6. He's a good athlete, 36 and a half inch vertical, 10 2 long jump, 20 reps. I think this kid, if featured, could be a guy that can get vertical, that can end up becoming a guy that is does have some dynamic qualities. I know he's tough. He can go in the backfield and block. You know, he's an ideal hybrid and I'm just throwing that out I, I don't know that you can consider a kid from Notre Dame and Morris Reservoir All-Star yeah. but he's a guy that I like probably better than the field but you know to answer your original question there, there there's no question that Ertz brings something to the table hey Rick what do you think about Rondale Moore at the NFL level well you know it's 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 really interesting that you you go to you go we go to receiver last <laughs> and because, you know, because I, I, guess, I guess we want to pretend that we won't do anything well, there. I, I, well, I get all excited when we go to receivers. I, I, so I got to say that for last. Yeah, I think that that is by far uh, the best position in this draft. I, I, I think that there's, in my book, in my book, there's seven blue chippers. That means to me, seven first round draft picks at least, and there may be more. And then you take a guy like Rondell when you bring up Rondell. Rondell is a very unique guy. I don't put him as a blue chipper, as a, as a um, pure receiver, but he is a playmaker. He is a gadget guy, return guy, you know, pocket full of miracles. I mean, he's a guy that somebody's going to get, uh, you know, in that second round or something, and, and, and if you use him correctly – uh, you're, you're going to have a really top guy. Now, in terms of that position, though, in terms of that position, obviously everybody's talked about the big three. I mean, the, the, you know, everybody's talked about the big three, you know, and that is obviously Smith and, and Waddle, and it, and it looks like everybody's consensus is, um, everybody's consensus is Chase from uh, LSU. And those guys are three, you know, top guys. You know, they all have great talent. Um, you know, Chase just put on a show in, in his pro day. He ran a 4-3-4, uh, you know, 3-9-9 short shuttle, which just knocks it out of the park. I mean, that's, that's world's record type. And, you know, he will probably be, because of that, the first wide out off the board. Uh, obviously, uh, Smith will be up there, even though he is very frail at 170. Uh, and my two most exciting offensive players in the draft <laughs> are are Waddle, <laughs> are the Waddle kid, and Kadarius um, uh, Tony yeah. at Florida. I mean, they they are my my favorite favorite guys. Now, if you look at those three, those three guys are you know top 15 picks. Those guys are going to be in that top 15. But my second tier, which to me is, is, is red blue is Marshall, the number two guy. And these guys all have great LSU great kid. Yeah. LSU kid, Kadarius, Tony. These mm -hmm. are guys that ran four, three, nine. Now I'm not selling you something that isn't there. I love Elijah Moore. I think he's a better pure receiver than Rondale, but they're the same kind of guy. He's another guy that, that, that shocked people with the four three nine, you know, and then uh, Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. So I call those guys light blues. I, those first three guys are hard blues. These guys are light blues. Now we're talking about that's what I'm saying. You're looking at 21. There's going to be a blue chip receiver there. Now if you want to walk by him and trade back for a tackle at 54, you can do that. But there is going to be a top guy. And then there's a lot of special guys that I like. And Rondell 
is at the top of that list. And I'm not even sure how to categorize them, but they're guys that I really like. Some of them are under the radar. Some of them don't really have a position. But I, Rondale Moore is one. The Eskridge kid out of Western Michigan is kind of a poor man's Rondell. He's a great kid out of Western Michigan. I like Terry out of Florida State. He's just the opposite. He's a big, tall, go-get-it guy. I love Stevenson kid out of Houston. Every time I see him play, I see Tariq Hill. And then I see – and I and, and I love Jalen Darden out of North Texas. Now, there's a million guys. I, I could keep going. I could keep naming guys for you. There's, you know, different guys, all kinds of different, you know, people, Amari Rogers, uh, you know, uh, Diami Brown, the kid out of North Carolina. I mean, it is just a power-packed um, – it's just a power-packed – and, you know, this is becoming the rule – and people that say receivers are risk, I, I, I think you're talking, you're talking 2015 talk. Uh, yeah. You know what's proven is that receivers are really playing faster. But they're ready made. They're, yeah, they're and, exactly. The and, and, game has changed yeah. at the high school and college level, and that old wives' tale about receiver that's that's a justification i, I wanted to ask you this because i brought this up before you came on um it, it to me it's apparent and much like you get that that story of the devaluing of the running back position over the years it seems like that the free agent wide receiver has been devalued by just how much stock you put into these rookie wide receivers coming out of college and being ready made to produce is that true i think that's absolutely true and i think the other thing I think that's exactly right. And then I think the other thing is, is that because there's a volume of these guys, it's high volume, it's just not quality, is a lot of people say, man, there's only one edge rusher, we better take him. There's only one left tackle, we better take him. We can get a good receiver in the second and third round. And that's true. That is absolutely true. Let me, let me give you some principles that – I think are are 2021, and one of them applies to to receivers. First of all, the first principle is corners are more valuable than they've ever been at any time in football, and the reason for that is the game is so spread out. You have mobile quarterbacks. You have to commit your safeties tighter to the box, and so your corners have always been on an island, but I, I think they're on an island greater than they've ever been. And if you can play man-to-man -man out there, you have a chance to be so much better. Remember, a lot of these quarterbacks now, you look at, the, you look at four out of the top five, those guys can take a zone read and take it 60 yards for a touchdown. So that game has changed, and I think the quarterbacks are like 12th men on the field now. And it's put a great emphasis on the corner position. I think number two, edge rushers still ruin the game. You only have to go back to the Super Bowl to see what two inferior tackles without help got one of the greatest magicians in, in the game killed and beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Edge rushers still ruin the game. Edge tackles save the game. Same example. They went there, they thought that Mahomes could overcome that, ended up killing them, biting them, and those things matter. Quarterback mobility, so important. Number one, it erases some of your flaws. And number two, particularly in the red zone, it, if you have a mobile quarterback who can run the zone region, this is one thing I like about Wentz, is you add the 12th man. And then the fifth thing, and this is what you just talked about, to me, receivers now contribute quicker. Contribute quicker. And it's a wives, it's an old wives' tale that we can't draft a receiver because, you know. Yeah. So, you know, somebody told me one time when I was a young rookie coach in the NFL, and they said, when you draft in that first round, you draft somebody that puts it in the end zone or somebody that knocks the quarterback down. Yeah. That, and one final thing about that very situation. And, and we got same team, 
two differences. Would you have any issue in Jalen Phillips at number 21 for the Colts because of his medical? Would you have any issue at some point, and if it involves trading down a guy like Gregory Russo to the Colts in the latter stages of round number one because he opted out? Any issue with either one of those? Well, the opt-out I can't worry about because Farley opted out. I mean, there's too many guys opted right. out. I'm not going to – I can't play judge and jury on that. That's not going to be an issue. My reports on, on Russo is that, is that the people worry about his maturity. They worry about some things like that, some of the things that, that scare me. If you look at his tape, it's very good. I, I think if you can clear – and, I mean, this is where Hammer and those guys have to do their diligence. If you can clear the injury and any red flags that you have on Phillips, talent-wise, he's, he's a 21st pick. Yeah, that makes makes a lot of sense. Well, you know what? You're ready to go on Thursday. I deem you ready to go. <laughs> Uh, you think you think you think those four hours a day since February first has got me going? I absolutely, absolutely, brother. Those guys, those guys are going to be able to take breaks, man. They'll come back, and you, you still be running over what uh, what's going. I, I can't thank you enough um, for for all the work that you do, all the knowledge and education that you uh, you do, and the and the wisdom along the way too is. It's certainly missed, man, I, and I'm, I miss having you on on a weekly basis. You know that, and hopefully one of these days we get back to when you're you're here because uh, it is it is always must listen stuff. I really do enjoy it, Rick. I enjoy you being on here, and certainly when there's a lot of unknowns and knowing that you you do that work and and watch and and take notes and and understand, man, that's uh, that's a value that not a lot of folks have around here, and I truly appreciate it. John, you're the best. Really enjoy doing it. Look forward to it. Our our once a year shot. Hopefully, we help the fans out a little bit today. Hey, thank you. We'll talk to you later on this week. Thanks, Rick. All right, John. It's uh, Rick Venturi via the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. That's pretty awesome. I I mean, he went he went well past. I, I think I had kind of a uh, a line of he was going to some names that I was not aware of just yet. So. That's good. All right. Uh, let's get your responses coming up on the other side to uh, what we talked about, that and more at 239-1070. Email the address, jmv at 1070thefan.com. Uh, if you missed a moment of it, you want to double back to get to you know, the Colts, the draft, the trade down, the edge rushers, the left tackles, the wide receivers, Rondell Moore, uh, the state of the Colts via free agency, Wentz, you know, tied end, which obviously the owner values possibility of Zach Ertz. I, I love the, the de- devaluing of the free agent wide receiver is one that's it's an interesting scenario, too. You look at all these w- receivers that are going to be available. Uh, he brought up Bateman. I don't even think we've talked about him, have we? Have we even brought him up from Minnesota? I don't think we brought up Marshall from LSU. That was really good. Podcast 1075thefan.com. I got time for you coming up on the other side at 239-1070 next. It's the Fan Morning Show with Jeff and Big Joe. David Craig. Slick and I, being roommates, we closed a lot of bars on the road before we closed the bar. In every town, we had this last toast. And the last toast was, you're nobody until you do something for somebody else. And you know his players felt that way. He was a great man. What an icon. The Fan Morning Show with Jeff and Big Joe. Weekday mornings at 7. On 93.5 and 107.5. The fan. Hey, it's JMV here. All right. The housing market is on fire is what they say. But let's face it. You're only as good as the realtor that you entrust to help you find your new home or sell your present. And I'm going to give you an absolute can't miss. Mark Deedle. It's Mark Deedle Realty. 317-755-4232, 317-755-4232, markdietl.com, mark, D-I-E-T-E-L.com today. It's amazing. If you're upgrading a little bit more property, uh, he's the guy that you need. In fact, multiple offers in three days, or he's going to sell that thing for 
free. If you're looking to downsize, maybe you have kids that are moving out, going away to college. You don't need all that extra room you used to. It's Mark Deedle again. I mean, the market is big, but it is red hot when you find the absolute best, and that is Mark Deedle. Shout out to Mark, by the way, too. A little bit of breakfast last week, too, which was awesome. Just kind of getting the ins and the outs and what to know and what to hit. And I know that you want the best, and Mark Deedle is. 317-755-4232. That's 317-755-4232. MarkDeedle.com. That's Mark, D-I-E-T-E-L.com today. T-Mobile is bringing 5G from big cities to small towns across America. We've been investing billions to light up the largest and fastest 5G network. And now, according to competitive data from Umlaut, T-Mobile is the most reliable 5G network, too. To celebrate, we're inviting everyone to upgrade their experience. Introducing the free 5G upgrade. Bring any working cell phone to T-Mobile and trade it in for a free 5G Samsung Galaxy. Still have a flip phone? If it can make a call, you can trade it in. Plus, all our plans include 5G access on the full T-Mobile network at no extra cost. Now that's an upgrade. T-Mobile is America's leader in 5G. Experience it today with the free 5G upgrade. Visit a neighborhood store or T-Mobile.com to learn more. Phone via 24 bill credits while supplies last plus tax. If you cancel credit, stop and balance on a required finance agreement may be due. Contact us. Qualifying credit service and undamaged trading required. Most reliable according to independent third-party Umlaut from crowdsourced user experience data from September 2020 to February 2021. Details at T-Mobile.com. Hey, JMV here for Connecticut Water. My friends, Joe, John, and Dennis have a great idea for you. Anybody out there looking for a new career path? We are talking great pay and benefits. How about... Well, fill in the void here of service technician. They're actually offering multiple roles in the category of service technician at Connecticut Water Systems. It's ConnecticutWatersystems.com. So if you're mechanically inclined, if you can fix things, if you can learn quickly and you want a new career path with great pay and incredible benefits, the Joe, John, and Dennis Hey, join their team at Connecticut Water Systems. For more info, it's online, ConnecticutIndy.com today. Find the best odds in the country only on the free Prop Swap app. Kevin Bowen here. You buy directly from other sports bettors who are ready to cash out. Join the rest of us and go to PropSwap.com right now. Hey, Indy. Tim Pearson here, founder of Chattanooga Whiskey, the only Tennessee high malt. Try Chattanooga Whiskey 91, our own rich malt-forward bourbon with four grains, three specialty malts, and finished in a charred white oak Solera barrel. Drink Chattanooga Whiskey and enjoy responsibly. Do you need air conditioning service and need to find a local well-trained expert you can trust, like family heating and air conditioning? Find that American Standard Air dealer at IndyHomeComfort.com. Sports with Dan Dockage. Dane Brugler, senior NFL draft analyst for The Athletic. The golden rule of scouting is traits over production. College football is so uneven from conference to conference that teams are focusing on the talent. They're focusing on the traits. And that's ultimately what you're drafting because the traits will translate from college to the NFL. The production doesn't always. Traits over production, that is the mantra that a lot of teams will go by. Dan Dockage, weekdays noon to 3 on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. The Ride with JMV. This will be the high point of my day. It's all downhill from here. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Thank you, Rick Venturi. That was really good. The podcast is up, 107.5thefan.com. Jim Irsay from last week also up there. Really good week starter leading up to the first round of the NFL draft coming up on Thursday. Uh, which you can hear, uh, not right here, because we have the Pacers and the Nets. By the way, Thursday, I'm going to be at the dugout down at Fletcher Place with Coors Light. I'll have, uh, I think, a pair of tickets to give away to the game on Thursday, the Pacer game. But because the Pacer game is on here, that means that WIBC will have the Colts draft. That's Matt Taylor, Rick Venturi, Joe Wrights, and Jeff Diamond coming at you coming up on Thursday. Uh, Matthew Stansberry writes inside the lounge. Yeah, Bateman is the guy always popping up around 21 on that PFF mock. Yeah, I, I hadn't really – we hadn't really talked about him at all until until right there, including Rondell Moore, Kyle. So do you think between edge rusher, left tackle, receiver, and corner, rank those one, two, three, four, and most likely to least likely what you think the Colts will do? I, I think – 
and I hate to say it because I'm Mr. Wide Receiver, but I listen, you saw what happened to left tackle and all that knocking around last year. And I think you you got to find somebody that is your long term future can't miss at left tackle. I, they 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 have and it hasn't been good. They have been living without an edge rusher forever. A legitimate, you know, then they need it. They do. But to me, with what you're hoping for from the quarterback position and what he suffered through in Carson Wentz a year ago in Philly with guys damaged along that that offensive line and how big of a struggle there was, um, listen, uh, Tevi, Davenport, whatever. I mean, you got to make sure that that thing is solidified for this year and then years to come. I wouldn't jack around with it. Uh, and listen, I'm I'm the king of wanting to jack around with it because I, I want another wide receiver. I understand edge rusher. I mean, Jim came on here last Wednesday and mentioned corner, but I wouldn't be jacking around with the offensive line of left tackle. I just wouldn't. So would you reach for a guy, you know, if even if you don't think he's worth the I, 21 pick? I, 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 would, I, would, I would take the best available at that position at 21. I mean, if you don't, then no. Would you mess around trading back to maybe 28, 29? Um, I think that's probably what they're going to do. I, To me, and everybody disagrees with me, that's why I brought up the whole uh, Quentin Nelson thing. I, I, would trust, I would trust somebody like that moving from left guard to left tackle before I would skate you know, too far down the list going to 54 overall in the second round. I'd, I'd be really concerned about that. But that's just me. And I don't normally go that way. But I think in this case, with what you're trying to do at quarterback, they're going to know better. I mean, hell, they know right now where they think this entire thing is going to go. But I wouldn't be I wouldn't be jacking around with that position. I mean, they jacked around with a lack of depth. Remember, they didn't address that a year ago. How'd that work out? Unless you get uh, Jared Veldier on the line at some point. Uh, Chicago Colt says, does Venturi release his draft board to the public? I don't. I just think he does all that, and he comes on this show and unleashes it, and then he does that on the draft show. Uh, he just did, and Rick just texted me, say, don't forget, you can move uh, Nelson you can move Nelson and then go on and you can, and I'd be all for it. I'd be all for it, but it didn't sound like that. That is a measure in which Jim and the team were thinking about when we had him on a Wednesday. All right. Two, three, nine, 10, 70. Let's go uh, Taylor up next today. Hello, Taylor. How are you? Hey, boy, what's going on, man? Go ahead. Hey, nothing. I'm going to talk about the draft real quick. Since I'm uh, one of these uh, football draft obsessives, who just so happens to be unemployed I just wanted to give a quick shout out to all them Colts fans because I've been quite bored and watching a lot of films. So, uh, what I think the Colts need to do first off is get cornerback. We can skip on defensive end, cornerback. Since we play that zone, we want. I like the Newsom guy out of uh, Northwestern. Yep. I think he's like, yeah, Newsom, right? Yeah. Yes, Greg Newsom. Yeah, yep. he, long arms, great in the zone. He can play that cover two perfectly. Second round, unless we decide to trade back, maybe late first round, like you mentioned. But second round, either cornerback or wide receiver. If Bateman's there, take wide receiver. If cornerback's available, there's a ton of them. There's a, there's like at least four or five corner or defensive ends, not muffle, second round defensive ends. Joe Tryon from Washington. I don't know if people talk about him too often, but the dude's a bat. Oh, oh, yeah, oh I've, I've, heard I've, I've heard him. I've heard him mentioned. I, I think some of the the guys that do their blogs and their podcasts have talked about him at length, no doubt. Dude, he, yeah. he's good, man. He's a sophomore, I think, something like that. But last thing, and then late in the draft, I hope we go for a tight end for once. And if we do, there's a white dude out of central Missouri State or something like that named Zach Davidson. He's a sixth-round sleeper. He used to be like a punter or something. But if we get the opportunity to take that dude and then roll with the punches. All right, buddy. Have a good day. Taylor, thank you very much. Inside the lounge via YouTube Live, Dexter Lee says, I just don't see how you justify a wide receiver that early. I, I don't see it. Now, mainly I don't see it because I would be floored that Chris Ballard would go that direction. Uh, not to say that it's not a need because it is because you don't know what you're going to get. I mean, health being number one from Paris Campbell. While I would love it, I agree with you. I mean, especially Dexter Lee, if, if even out of the realm of left tackle, especially if you get 
10 consecutive offensive picks to start this draft, and then guys kind of just slide right into your lap defensively. And then you try to finally, you know, put an end since Robert Mathis to the futility of, of what the edge rushing position has been here for a long time. But I'd agree with you. As much as I I don't want to, I would agree with you. Uh, Brandon's next at 239-1070. Brandon, hello. Hey, good. How are you? I'm great. Go ahead. Hey, long-time listener, first-time caller. You do a great job. Thank you very just much. That's to, nice. Just Thank you. Just wanted to say that I'm really excited about this next football season and the young core of players that we have. I'm just hoping there's these two or three positions, including the line and the edge rush, that we got to fill. But, man, if we can fill them, we're going to have ourselves a heck of a ball club, and I'm hoping they can do it. All right. Well, I, mean, I know a lot of fans out there. Brandon, thanks for the call. Hope you're right. It's from Dave in Brownsburg. I told you, quality corner at 21. That's what yeah, Jim Mercer told us here on Wednesday. Does a guy like Caleb Foley make it down there for Virginia Tech? Um. Yeah, you know, and we had uh, the caller before last mentioned Greg Noose about a Northwestern as another guy. They get all the way down there, and I think after that, you probably, you know, maybe you trade back anyway. Yeah, as much as I think wide receiver, it just it just well, it would be so to me out of character. I would certainly be shocked at it. JMV. <laughs> That's good. JMV, I always uh, enjoy listening to Rick Venturi right before the draft. One of my favorite times of the year to listen to sports talk. We appreciate that. Really do. Oh, man. Yeah, the dugout, by the way, you guys are asking the dugout on, on Thursday. I almost said Friday, but it's on Thursday with Coors Light. And your chance to win. I got Pacers Nets tickets for you coming up on Thursday. And I want to get outside because they have a great outdoor seating area, but I don't know weather wise if that's going to work. I wish it would because I need it. We haven't, we've been down there, I think, twice in the past month and a half or so, and the weather hasn't been good enough to get out there. I need to get out there. Yeah, I mean, Rondell Moore. I've seen a couple of these mocks that have him in around one. Actually, I take that back. I see just one. But he's he's going to be in the mix with some of these wide receivers. I see you see him with Kadarius Toney out of as Florida mentioned. You know, Terrence Marshall was a guy I think Rick mentioned for the first time really on this show, the wide receiver from LSU. The one guy we didn't ask about was Alex Leatherwood. I, I don't think Rick brought him up, the lineman from Bama. Hey, before the break, Scott's going to jump in here at 239-1070. Scott, hello. Thanks for the call. Hey, good afternoon. I think the Colts with the 21st pick, any first rounder, you got to go with a game changer that you can have and count on for at least 10 years. So that limits your options to a game changer. So to me, that's left tackle or wide receiver. And that's, you know, that's a left tackle. There's some available that you can get at the 21st pick or a wide receiver, and the draft's got plenty of them. You know, Rondell Moore out of Purdue, or take your pick at a left tackle. There's a couple of them that are going to be available. But those are your two option picks. A cornerback, you just can't get – you can't change a game with a cornerback for 10 years. They live through four or five years, but then you never hear their name again. So I think you got to go left tackle or wide receiver. Hey, Scott, thank you very much. Listen, longer-term future with left tackle, but I will also tell you this. The short-term also applies because you got to make sure that thing's shored up. I mean, just think about Wentz for a moment with a broken-down offensive line. And, and because, I mean, left tackle doesn't break down your offensive line, and they have good players along that line, but you you got to make sure of this to me. I mean, as much as I don't look at it that way, now part of the problem is 
that most would suggest to you if, let's just say you're talking about 21 right here, and a guy like Christian Dershaw, if, if Christian Dershaw is gone by by 21, you know, who do you value, you know, in that category where you don't don't necessarily deem it the right move to trade back? Uh, Rick mentioned Vera Tucker as well out of USC. That, um, and I, I think he wrote off Jenkins, Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. I mean, he gave him a lot of credit, but I also think he put him in the category of right tackle, whereas Braden Smith would logically move to left tackle, and it didn't seem like he was down with that. Uh, JMV, I don't think you've ever had a better two weeks in radio. Thank you, man. I pre- Florida, John, that's awesome of you to say. We've had a good two-week period right here. We've had some flow. Hey, listen, all I do is kind of sit back and ask some questions and let the people that really know go to work, the people you want to hear from go to work. We not only have had a, a couple of great two, we've had really since January had incur- just an incredible first quarter here, or what we call the first quarter. I mean, incredible. And that's all because of you. We'll provide some content and have fun with it, but, man, it's because you guys, you guys are cranking it up for us. And we do appreciate that. Not only are you cranking it up here, then you crank it up on Saturday. And holy hell. I mean, it is a good thing. And I do appreciate that. Let me take a break. We'll come back final time. If you guys want to jump on board, uh, you can. We're going to also set up what we got going on on tomorrow's show. And now Sam Monson's going to be here. Uh, we also got Rake Straw tomorrow, too. I think Kaylin Jackson of the Colts is going to jump on here a little bit tomorrow. Uh, her her dad, Jim, was on the show on Wednesday. We talked about uh, kicking the stigma, and that's something that's close to them. We're going to bring up that and a couple of more things with Kalen coming up on tomorrow's show as well. We have a busy week set up for you, leading up to the Thursday first round of the draft, and I'll be live on location at the dugout down at Fletcher Place with Coors Light. More on that and your calls for the final time today at 239-1070 next. The savings are in full bloom on every new and pre-owned vehicle at Hubler. Spring into something new at all Hubler locations. Visit drivehubler.com. Kids, tell your parents about Forum Credit Union's Sprout of the Month contest, where you could win $100 in a Sprout account. Details at 1075thefan.com. Bet River Sportsbook has supercharged its app for Apple phones. And you can download the update today from the iOS App Store. Loaded with performance improvements, the new Bet Rivers iOS app makes placing your bets a seamless experience. Bet with a winner. Download the new Bet Rivers app from the iOS App Store or update your app today. Must be 21 or over to play. Playable only in Indiana. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 9 with it. It's a first day. Of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a laid back Sunday afternoon, you wish would never end. The homemade taste of bluebell, and good friends gathered round. The good old games are being made right now. It's a tailgate party on game day, it's a welcome to the neighborhood. It's a night of the start of something good it's sharing bluebell ice cream as the evening sun goes down the good old days are being made right now the good old days are being made right now hey your friend JMV for Andy Moore, Buick GMC, 131st and State Road 37. It is in Fisher's Talk to my guy, Eric Wilson. If you want a new set of wheels, it is simple. It is. And then let Eric and his staff go to work for you. I'm going to tell you what. 
We're driving around to GMC Acadia. It is new, and it has everything that you need. I mean, absolutely everything that you need and that you love, and the price tag is right there. How about $249 per month with nothing down? Just roll that bad boy off the lot right now. Have that conversation with Eric Wilson about anything that you have in mind. All right, spring, and you're thinking about a brand-new ride. You can find it, and really, it's one-stop shopping and hassle-free at one place. Andy Moore Buick GMC. Tell him I sent you to 131st and State Road 37 in Fishers. Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly with thehomeloanexpert.com. It's no secret that the housing market is red hot. Homes are selling day one, and they're going for over list price. Some folks are making offers on homes that they haven't even seen in person. The competition is fierce. You have to be pre-approved and working with a strong mortgage lender. Get a leg up on the competition and get pre-approved now. TheHomeLoanExpert.com. The Home Loan Expert LLC, NMLS number 1326241. Now more than ever, people want to know if there's anything they can do to help. And the answer is yes at BioLife Plasma Services. Your plasma is desperately needed to create life-changing medicines to help treat people with immune deficiencies. Those who are most at risk right now. And when you donate plasma at BioLife, you can earn up to $1,000 in your first month as a token of appreciation for your time. So please, become a donor at BioLife. Visit BioLifePlasma.com to learn more. My name is Stacy Earhart, and I'm one of the owners of Fulton Interior Systems, a construction company here in the great state of Indiana. Every year, some construction companies illegally pay workers cash under the table. That puts companies like mine that provide a good living wage and pay payroll taxes and employee benefits at a major competitive disadvantage. These companies rob our state from over $405 million every single year. Imagine what could be done for Hoosiers with that money. Visit indianacip.com backslash tax fraud to learn how you can take a stand. The NTT IndyCar Series races at Texas. Saturday night at 7 on WIBC and Sunday at 4.30 on the fan. The Ride with JMV. Down the bullet, Prince. And. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. All right, so the Oscars were last night, in case you didn't know. I didn't watch. I didn't even know one of the movies. Not one of the films. Uh, The ratings last night... An all-time low. It went from 23.6 million in 2020, 29.6 in 2019, to 9.85 last night. Lordy, that is a fall right there. Big time. Not even 10 mil. And like I said, I didn't know. I mean, it's more out of ignorance for me. I didn't even know, like, movie theaters were open. Not that I I haven't gone since September 21st, 1999. But I didn't know anything they were talking about. Uh, Jay is at 239-1070. Jay, welcome to the show. Hey, JMB. I'm bringing an issue up. This is Jay from the north side. You got a buddy. And I was wondering, five days before the draft and then in the middle of IRL season, I was wondering why there was no sports on Channel 6 or Channel 13 on Saturday night. I limited my sports channels last year as of late April, and that's how I catch my sports. And for a weekend when all the sports is happening, for them to have no sports, on Channel 6 or Channel 13 News is a joke, I think. I So I, I was obviously doing radio on Saturday night, and, and I didn't see. They didn't have any sports whatsoever at the end no. of their newscast. None at all. Channel, well, yeah, Channel I think, 6 did a story on these people who, who have a store in uh, – yeah. Speedway, which isn't really sports, so they don't have a lot of they don't have a big crew down there for one, and I'm sure that's part of it. They probably had an anchor and then a weather person, right? On six. That's probably it. So there was gonna be yeah, no sports person two. to speak of, and it's probably what they're gonna do is they're gonna throw to about a two and a half minute package something that is already pre produced with no scores and highlights of the day or what's taking place over the weekend so far. And I'm assuming 13 is probably in a similar category right there. Now, I don't know 
Did, did Come 13... on, Runovich, do some sports. What's that? Come on, Jenny Runovich, do some sports. <laughs> well, that's not her fault, though. I mean, it's not. That's their that's their fault. And they do. I mean, they – and unfortunately, I even saw it when sports was still rather relevant in TV. I mean, but, they've got Calabro. He's the biggest IRL man there is, so. Yeah, well, he would see him try to say IndyCar, not IRL, Jay. But, yeah, I know what you're talking about there, brother. I do. Right. I, it just, it's just, especially on weekends, man, television stations have, have been hit by the lack of of people and crew. I feel bad for him now. Because, and, Jay, thank you for the call. Back in, back in the day, I mean, you used to have all these people working – and, you know, prompter operators and camera people. And now, like, Jenny will be sitting there and have 19 devices in her hands because she's doing basically everything. Which, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to cry too much because I'm in there on a Saturday night and I'm damn straight doing everything. I know that. At least Kyle's in here weekly, Monday through Friday, to help me out. But, man, that's just, uh, what you got to do is you got to be vocal about it. And I, I don't want to say I'm not telling you to turn somebody off, but if if they don't like what if you don't like what they're offering, I mean that's the only way you can get to them. I don't want them devaluing sports around here. There's no doubt about it. But you know, make your voices heard if you don't like what's happening. I mean, hell, you do that to me. <laughs> know that. Big Earns at two three nine ten seventy. Hello, Big Earn. What's up, JMV? What's happening? You could you could be like me and be a Cowboys fan, a Reds fan, and a Pacers fan. <laughs> I haven't won shit since nineteen ninety nine. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Did you just cuss? Did I hear that? Yeah, you did. Did I you hit that? I think you did. I don't care. I think I got the I got it with a dumb button. So you're good. Go ahead. Uh, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the Pacers. Yeah. You, like you said earlier, even with T.J. Warren and them guys, they're they're still a couple pieces away from being top four and being competitive. Don't you think? There, I think that there. I, I think we've seen enough. Yeah, I yeah. think we've seen enough, even without these guys being all together. So, yeah. yeah. And you can't. I don't think I'm still with you on Turner. I'm a Turner guy too. You can't trade him because you'll give up 180 gazillion points a game. And they're gonna. I mean, they're yeah. gonna. That and I, I, you know, and they're gonna. I mean, it's, it's going to come down to to keeping a trade in the big guy bigger, and it's going to be 33 that's going to get dealt. There's no doubt about that. Hey, have a great evening. Thank you, bigger. Man, he did cuss, didn't he? Did you get that or me? I think I got it too. That stuff doesn't even phase me anymore. Hey, JMV, Rondell Moore was on Good Morning Football on the NFL Network today. They loved him. We'll see where he goes. Maybe he squeaks inside round one coming up on Thursday. Maybe it's a Friday. Uh, Indy Car Complainer says, did he just say Indy IRL? Yeah, that's why. Jay's a good guy, so I, you know, I'm not gonna go and be a, a jerk to anybody about it. But yeah, uh, Calabro would definitely reference that as IndyCar. There's no doubt. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it it really is tough. And and the thing is, they offer like TV will offer what you want. I'll give you a great example, Fox 59. I mean, they have me on with Hagen on Sundays um, because you guys watch it. Um, other stations will view how much you tune in, you know, when are the spike moments when you're watching their newscast and if it's, you know, watching weather, it's going to be a lot of weather. And there is a, a level of devaluing of sports, but I think there's also a level that's unfortunate around here in a lot of ways. There's a devaluing of, of the uh, local content and, uh, you yeah. know, I think you guys deserve. You deserve better, and if you want better, then you have to ask for it. That's why I said you guys do that to me, so do that to everybody else. Please. But I know on the weekends, man, it's a short crew, and they're doing their best. There's no doubt about that. Hey, great day today. Rick Venturi podcast with everything you need to know about the Colts, free agency, the draft, and then some. 1075thefan.com. Kyle, great job out of you. Spectacular day for you. Inside the lounge, I appreciate you, everybody. We'll be back with you tomorrow with three. Sam Monson, Pro Football Focus. Rake Straw, Kalen Jackson of the Colts, also a part of this show 
coming up tomorrow. This is 93.5, 107.5, and 1070 The Fan. Go out and enjoy this weather. Talk at you tomorrow at 3. It's time to put all those mock drafts you've looked at to good use. NFL Draft Week is here, people.